pleased to introduce tonight's lecturer, our very own Prime Minister and National Grand Sheik is Daria Bay. Let's receive her. Come on. Islamism or if we all rise and face the east. all rise and face the east. You can see at a 45 degree angle with five fingers on your left hand and two on your right. You can re I'm going to recite the Martian American prayer and repeat after me. Allah, the father of the universe. Allah, the father of the universe. The father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Drew Ali. Drew Ali. I mean. I mean. I saw my leg more. Islamism um, and welcome to the House of Reawakening Mind today is of nationality and birthrights and uh, nationality is the order of the day. It's not that's what's on the menu for today. We will try to put up the projection later on today, but the software is updated, so we're not able to put this stuff up on the screen tonight. I want to start off coming from uh, a book that I have from called Who are the Moors? For those who are, uh, have that book, let me just first come from the uh, Moorish literature. Can you hear me? Um, my Moorish literature is in the bag. You can hear me one of those two. I want to go to what shall we call them? shall we call him? So often our various journalists find trouble in selecting the proper name for the Moorish American. Some say Negro, another will brand him race man. Still another will call him Afro-American, and then some color, dark American, coon, shine, the brethren, and your folks. It is indeed a hard matter to find something suitable for the various occasions where title needs to be used. Is these people, is, is it that these people have no proper name? Did they have a national name when first brought to these shores in the early part of the 17th century? Question. If so, what was it? Question. Did not the land from which they were, of course, have a name? Question. If now, it now appears a good idea for those whose duty it is to write for the various journals to find out what the national name of these, of these forefathers of, the, of these people was. Also, look into the history of the founders of civilization and see who they were and where they stood in the building of this present civilization. Probably two hours in the up-to-date library would serve to relieve the strain of our man of letters. When the occasion represents itself for a title for these people, the matter of various names given to these 22 million people with all colors of every race of the globe was an act of European psychology. They gave them a name, then defined it as something inferior to theirs. White, they defined it as a color of purity. Black, they say, represents everything of evil. The Negro, as they were called in this nation, have no nation to which they might look with pride. Their history starts with the close of the Civil War, or most probably is being forced to serve someone else. 
Thus, he is separated from the illustrious history of his forefathers, who were the founders of civilization of the old world. This matter should be looked into with the hope of correcting it. It's, um, and that's what we're here to do today, correct that. It's, um, it's, um, it's, um, and so, one of the most important things, and like you can't see the screen, is that I want to talk about nationality because that is so important. It is the key to everything that we do in our life. And one of the things is if you think about it, our, every nation of us, if you look at every people on this globe except us, that includes the Europeans that call themselves white. They all can relate to a nation. But where can you relate to? Isn't there someone saying to you, well, I'm from Africa. In Africa, there's over 53 different nations in Africa. What nation in Africa are you from? And if so, what tribe are you from? And so therefore, we can not keep on saying that we're Afro-American or African-American, because you're talking about two continents. In those continents, where's your landmass and where do you belong? And so if you look at different people, they have a place that they can call home. Where is your place that you call home? And that's so important. So what Prophet Noah Drali did is he said he knew there was a problem for us here, and so he came back to reunite us with the families of nations. And that's to bring us back to whom we belong to. And we are the Moorish Americans. If you look at any ancient book anywhere, you see Moorish in those books, whether it's spelled M-U-U-R-I-S-H or M-U-U-R or M-A-U-R. I went all the way back to 352 and found Moorish spelled M-A-U-R. So it's not a question of who we are. It's a, it's a matter of us identifying with who we are. And I think most of our problem is because we've been told we are nothing for so long that when someone comes to try to tell you who you are, it's very hard to accept it. Once you accept it, there is no rejected. Once you embrace who you are, it's a whole nother feeling. Imagine just walking around all the time unconscious of not knowing who you are, and then you wake up all of a sudden and realize who you are. That's the condition that we're in. When people start waking up to who they are, they become very inquisitive, asking questions and wanting to know more. And I think that's the state in where we are today. Nationality is the key, though. I can tell you anything, but you have to believe that that is your nationality. You have to have faith in that is your nationality. You have to want to be a person to say, I'm going to give you all the information that I can give you. Then it's up to you with the information to make informed decisions on how you want to use it. But it's up to you. So the information can be given to you. We can't force anything on you, but we're going to give you the information and you have to decide for yourself how much you can digest in the information and how you can apply it to yourself. And I always tell people, think about it, if you all have brothers and sisters, siblings, if you do, ask them to pull out that birth certificate. You know, we know, I'm some of you all, I know you know it's a board of state, right? You know that it's, it's not an authentic document. This is a man-made document to help keep track of people, and it may be us, right? And so it's to sell your birthrights out. So just ask your brothers and sisters to pull out birth certificates. Some of you all may have been just a couple of years in, of each other. And then all of you came from the same womb, which is mother, which you know are maternal. So we can have a different father, but mother is maternal. So if you come from the same vessel, you would have to be the same as the vessel from where you came, correct? Right. Let's look at those birth certificates, see what they say. And I'll tell you, a lot of birth certificates, some will have Negro, some are half colored, some are half black, some are half Afro-American, because we was in the Afro-American state at one time after I heard you, and then some today will be found an African-American slash black, right? How in the world can we all come from the same vessel and be all these different things? So you know that there's something wrong with that picture. Anytime every 10 or 15 years your nationality changes, there's something wrong with that picture. You don't change, but the origin of you changed for some reason. So whatever is best for him to call you today, that's what he's going to call you. One of the interesting things that I ran into is that just about two or three years ago, they were doing the updated census, right? And it was funny because on all of the radio stations, and I don't listen to radio really, but this day I happened to be listening to the Tom Jordan Morning Show. And all of these different radio stations had some of this information about the census. And they were saying that the word colored was being reintroduced into the census because older people were more comfortable with the word colored. Now, if you are a thinking person, most of the older people have already adopted either the black 
or African American, right? So how are they going to now all of a sudden get comfortable with color? What they were trying to do is get us readjusted to the word color. So when they start saying people of color, so now our people say, well, you know, people of color, they get upset if you don't identify with that. Well, if you say colored person or people of color, is that any different than saying colored person? Does it sound like there's a difference to you? People of color, colored person, sounds the same, right? But people are not paying the same varnish or dye. You can't do that to a person. That's the only way a person can be colored or fictitious or a simulation of truth. So look at your hue. It's not going to change. Is it a simulation of truth or is this truth? When you look at yourself, are you true or are you a simulation of truth? The bottom line is that you are the truth and not a simulation. So that's what color means. And so we don't want to let them put something else on us today. Now it's color people. All right, now Jesse Jackson got paid to call us African Americans, right? So everybody started being African American. So now you're African American or you're colored, you're black. So when you get an application and they have all these different things on there, why is it when it comes to us, they have so many different variants on there? Again, something is wrong with that picture. It's whatever they think that you're going to be comfortable with today. And so now, if you look at more information today, they have more or Asiatic in the documentation. The reason that they do that is because now they're telling you that more means black. There was a sister on uh, Roland Martin's show, and she rewrote the book, um, the Invisible, she called it The Invisible Queen. It's about Queen Charlotte. She was an Asiatic Moor. They called her a black Moor. She was a Moor that was married to uh, King Charles, King George. She was married to King George. So anyway, the sister was talking about her. And so Roland Martin said about the word more. He said, well, what about that word more? She said, you know that means black. And she was so unconscious. I just literally, if I could have blew my top off my head, for her to turn around and try to identify the word means black. So anything to make you accept being black. Let's take a look at that word black. First of all, in the literature, it tells us that black according to science means death. OK, so anything dealing with black means void of life, worthless, no good. They use things like black male. You know, anything that's degrading that can cause harm, that's black, right? Now let's look at the etymology of the word black. The etymology of the word black means pale. That's one of the etymology words of the word black, right? So let's go back to who's actually black then because I don't think I'm pale. <laughs> I don't think so. And so when we're talking about these terms, we're talking about status. And that's what we have to think about. So people think they're talking about your hue. They're talking about status. So if I make your status black, which means no light, no void, and everything degrading, that makes your status seem like a bad status. If I talk about white, and white means purity, God, goodliness, and all those things good. So I name myself white because I represent good is what I want you to think. And I tell you, you're black, so you don't have any conscious thoughts or levels of anything that's good about yourself. So there's only two things, the black and white. You hear them say everything is black and white. And so, therefore, you either put in one category or the other. When we're talking about the status of an individual, and so we know we're not colors, we're not black, we're not, we're definitely not, if you want to say white persons, again, you're talking about status. And we talk about white persons, if you have the um, literature, the status of white persons is in there, or the book who are the Moors. And so I apologize because I don't have the screen up, but you all can follow me where I am, uh, jumping around here. But we talk about the status of, um, of black in here also. I put everything on that drive diary, so um, I should be able to pull my laptop up though and just put it on here. Just pull your laptop up for me. Um, you all probably will be able to see what I'm talking about because you don't have to stand up for you. Know. The uh, documents uh, who are the, um, about info got no trial day. I think I put it under. It's, that, it's in the folder that says uh, less class tonight, less tonight. Yeah. Yes, Lord. So anyway, um, I wanted you all to kind of see the information that I have out there. And we're going to talk about a few things and how we can identify with our nationality and birthrights, how important they are. I just want to say while he's pulling that up, that one of the things that probably, one of the things that probably no jolly told us how important nationality is, he said if you have to make Mother Earth your bed, 
and the brook that is your blanket proclaim your own. So that, that's really important to know, to be able to proclaim your own thing. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm I broke down everything on here. The black, white um, definition of all here. I could just could have printed it out for them. I guess I could have made a hard copy for everybody to follow along. No, this one is in the definition of a packet. I actually started to because we're going to project it. The printed house, we often actually have this packet. Um, because you all can't see it on the screen. The definition of the information. This uh, little path that I put together was a nice message called for the board. And I have a lot of information from the nationality of education to uh, the definition of black and all of those. So I don't know, just know what you can, you know, on my computer, you can't project on the computer though, right? But you still have to have a computer, you can't have a computer. Oh, okay. And this is the At 46%. All right, so I was going into the word Negro, so let me go back to the word Negro a moment, because I actually went into Negro uh, with a good amount of information for you all. So Negro, a name given to a river in West Africa by the word because it contains black water. Negro superseded code as the most polite word for African Americans at a time when black was considered more offensive in colonial, in colonial America during the 1600s. The term Negro was, according to one historian, also used to describe Native Americans. I'm going to stop here for a minute because you know when they talk about so called Native Americans, right? You can't hear me. Oh. I got to hold this thing for a few minutes. <laughs> All right, now, is that better? You all yes, uh, apologize. Yes. <laughs> just tell me. Just say, look, I can't hear you. you. <laughs> all right, so let me go back to uh, Negro. A name given to a river in West Africa by Moors because it contained black water. Negro superseded colored as the most polite word for African Americans at a time when black was considered more offensive in colonial America during the 1600s. The term Negro was, according to one historian, also used to describe Native Americans. And I want to stop there. Because, you know, again, they try to say that the so-called Native Americans, they used to call Indians as someone different than us, right? But if historians are saying, well, at one time, these people were called the same thing, and we know according to history, we're the only ones that are named after, who are they talking about? Us. Absolutely. How many of you ever all looked in a dictionary, um, this is like an old ancient, uh, old historian dictionary where it says, when it brings up actually uh, Americans, and it tells you in the dictionary that American was the original copper colored complected people, and it was taken away and used by the Europeans. It actually says that. How many people have ever seen that in a dictionary? Oh, absolutely wonderful. Educated group of people here. All right, I love it. I love it. Uh, absolutely. Okay, so now you all be able to get a copy of this. I think Dr. Layla, can we do something to make copies for them to be able to download? Okay, thank you. All right, and so also, um, now we're talking about John Bellin O'Neill, the Negro Law of South California, I mean South Carolina, in 1848, stipulated that the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient barbers and their descents, and does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Moors, or the Negro Asiatics, such as the last scars. Now, let me just go back for a minute because this is so interesting. They say the word Negro doesn't relate to the Moor, right? But then they go back and say, or the Negro Asiatics. That, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Because you can't be a Negro and be Asian, right? Okay, so this is just interesting information, but again, once you become awake, that's interesting to me how anyone can go back to sleep or act like they have never ran into this knowledge. I, I can't understand that. All right, so now we're going to go the word black, an adjective, old English, black, absolutely dark, absorbing all light, 
the color of soot or coal. From total dramatic, black is burned. Source also of Old Norse black, dark. Old High German blah, black, Swedish black, Dutch black or burn. From pie to burn, gleam, shy, flash. Source also Greek, filgin, to burn, scorch. Latin flagger to blaze, grow up. From the root word, okay? The same produced in Old English, okay, here we go. Talking about or swart or swarty. How many of you ever seen a um, book where it's talking about people and it's identifying their fewest swarty? Us, right? That's, that's talking about us, okay? So we go into the etymology of the words. And this is the good one here where it says also the word black blunt also means pale. How many of y'all have looked that up and saw that etymology of the word means pale? Now look at you. Is there anything pale about your complexion? No. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. And so now, so these are some of the interesting words that we're calling. So I identified all the ones that we read about and what shall we call them. So now we're going to go to the word color. Okay. According to our literature, it says anything that has been painted, stained, burned, or dyed, an appearance or simulation of, right, as distinguished from which is real. Again, look at you. Are you real? All right, so you can't be colored. So it's, I'm not, it's not it's just something that I just said I made up. I'm just giving you all true information. Let's go to something that's interesting, Ethiopia. Now I was talking to a sister, a nurse uh, associate of mine, who I used, to, I used to do before I went full time into fulfilling the nation. I was a cardiovascular nurse. And so one of the things is Ethiopia. Ethiopia, we know that it means a demarcation line of the, the name of a maxim, the first true divine name of Africa. We all familiar with that, right? Divided the land between the father and the son, right? So we know that the demarcation means the division of, right? Okay, absolutely. All right, so now let's go into also formerly known as Abyssinia. How many people are familiar with Abyssinia? All right. So when we tell our brothers and sisters that they're Abyssinians, right? They are not Ethiopians because that was a name that was given to a landmass of the division between the father and the son. So the division with the landmass separated. Okay? All right, absolutely wonderful. So let's go into the question of human race. Okay? So we know that people cannot be any of these things that we're talking about, right? So there's only one true and divine race. You might know what that race is. Human, human. Yeah, absolutely human. So let me ask you, if I ask you, what is your nationality? Can you tell me, I don't like pointing, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? Oh, yeah. can you tell me, oh, handsome. Can you tell me, what is your nationality? Tell me your nationality. What is your nationality? I'm being a moor. All right, a moor. <laughs> it's not, he knows he's a Moorish American. Beautiful, and that's from the mouth of a babe. All right, it's not. So what is your origin? Morocco, okay, but what is your origin? True first origin. You mean Asia? Good, you're on the right track, Asia. So that would make us what? Asiatic. Asiatic, that's your origin, all right? So we got our race and we got our origin, right? What, and he knows what our nationality is. So when you tell someone, says, if they ask you now, you can tell them, my race is human. I'm human by race, I'm Moorish by nationality, and I'm Asiatic by origin. All right, because when you get paperwork from the nation or any documents that we do, it's beautiful to see that that's so in there because when you get applications from somewhere else, that's not on those applications. So we have to make the ones to change it. Now, I don't know how many of y'all ever seen in Maryland, I'm not, in Maryland, they had, before they went to the computers, we have wrote into Maryland and the Division of Motor Vehicles had on their applications for those driving instruments, Asiatic, Asiatic Mulatto. How many of you ever seen that on those Maryland? Wow. No. Right, absolutely. So a lot of them did have that on there. And the good thing is they identify with that because they know. See, the bottom line is that in order to change the people, you must first change their yeah. literature. So you have to change the information that people absorb, right? In order to do that, we have to make sure that we're the ones that's pressing forward with that information. So we have to create the venue so our people will be able to wake up. Because a lot of times the just they say they don't know what that means. 
How many of y'all knew what mulatto meant before you became conscious of who you were on your journey? You knew what mulatto was? Okay, good. Before you become conscious on your journey, most of us don't mulatto. I mean, unless you know you were raised with that understanding. Mulatto? No, a lot of people don't know that. They know things like biracial and things like that, but they don't really know what mulatto means. And do anyone know what the term is? Someone is supposed to be part of the so-called Native Americans and European, what name they're given? Anybody know that one? No. But I'll put that question out there, and we're going to give a gift to anybody who can give me that answer. No, not Indo-European. There's a name for it. Y'all, I know y'all not thought of Albion? No, Albion's European. No, no. I can't believe y'all not using, oh, that's why you can't go have phones on. Well, we're gonna give a gift to that person who finds that information. Somebody might um, do it on Facebook, say that again. Oh, absolutely. This is going to be good. I have questions up here. What is the best European flag? What a European and, and uh, though they're going to probably have the definition of Indian, but Native American and European mix, what is that called? What do they call it? Because European got named everybody now. I'm going to leave y'all with that question. So we're going to give a gift to find the first person to find the answer. <laughs> we're going to give to the first person to find the answer. Somebody says somatic. Eurasia. Eurasia. No, don't guess. Yeah. All right, look it up. You all had this in class, though. Okay. All right. So let's go to fact one. Good for you, Mestizo. Mestizo. Very good. Very good. All right, so we have a gift for this brother up here. Would you, did you look it up? <laughs> we know, um, does he have a DVD? Uh, give him a DVD right there in that bag of the one, let him choose which one he wants. Yes. <laughs> yes, um, they have a name for everybody, so you should have known that you could find it. So that's, you know, because when they tell us, they call us one thing, right? But anybody with Asiatic blood is considered Asiatic, which they should be. So that should tell you something, right? What does that mean about our bloodline? What does it tell you about our bloodline? Strong, right, strong. That's why you get everything had to come out from you, right? Anytime a person says that no matter how much of that blood you gotta drop in you, that you Asiatic, that's some powerful things, right? That's, right. that's some powerful signs. So that would have to mean that you are the creators of everything. That's right. All right? Everything, including the European, that's our children, our poor children. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so for those who have uh, who are the boards, we're going to go to consider the facts of uh, fact number one. If you have that book, it will be a pink book if you just got one today. Uh, who are the more fact number one? I want to let Sheik Dao read fact number one for us. Yes. Fact number one. Consider the facts. If you have the book, fact number one. Consider the fact, fact number one. It is a historical fact that the Moors are the descendants of the ancient Moorites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. This is the line genealogy of the Moorish nation. Allow the creator of the universe, Adam, Eve, mother of the nation, Seth, Adura, mother of Enos, and Canaan, Mahala, El, Jared, Jared, Awan, mother of Enoch, first. I met Noah, Shem, Arfax, Salah, Eber, Galen, Rain, Surrey, Nuru, Lot, Moab, Moroccan, 
modern day Moors, nationality Moorish Americans, tribal names Bay, Ali, and Hill. Do you know where Africa is exactly? Well, if you're an American and think the whole of Africa is across the ocean, then you're, in a, then you're in for a big surprise to find out that you are standing on part of the very land which our forefathers called Africa. Surprise. And that's fact number one. So how many of y'all are familiar with the information in fact number one? All right, good. Information, how many of y'all know that America is a combination of the ancient name of Mexico and the modern name of Africa? Absolutely, good. Some of y'all do know that. If not, all you gotta do is take a piece of paper, if you write it out for me, write a maxim, then write Africa up underneath of it, and do cancel out. Absolutely. Let me tell you, this is your opinion, this is science to everything you do, right? Everything you do, he uses our science as well, right? All right, fact number two. This land is known as America, however, our ancestors knew it as Al Morocco. This first true and divine name is Amexum, the Moabites Moors, the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. Where we are standing right here today is the present Moroccan Empire. It is home, absolutely home. How many of you all know that, that you're standing right here home in Morocco today? Yeah. The empire, absolutely. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yeah. When you know who you are, it's a whole different feeling. When you walk around in an unconscious state, you don't know who you are, but when you know who you are, it just feels so good. And you can hold your head up high. You don't mind wearing your garb or your head. But if no one is explaining the information to you, you have no idea who you are and what belongs to you. So when you're walking around, you don't feel like if you told me that you are not home, didn't you always feel out of place? No matter how many generations of children, if you're not home, you feel what? Out of place. So when a child is adopted, they still feel something is wrong even when they're with parents that are loving because they don't feel like it's home. The same nurturing or care is not there. They know something is different. And then finally when the parent tells them that, they still feel out of place. They always seek to do what? Find home. But we're not looking anywhere, are we? Absolutely not. Another question I would have put out there, how is it that we're supposed to be the greatest committers of crime today, right? So why is it that all, all this supporting that they're doing with people we haven't supported us anywhere? Because we, we home. Somebody said that again. We home. We home. We home. Absolutely. So there's no place like what? Home. Home. That's right. There's no place like home. Fact three. If you have the book again, follow we're on fact three. These historical facts may be researched and found in various Moorish literatures which is where one would expect to find the truth about Moorish history. Yes, accepting the facts, let's refer to the writings of Prophet Noah Ali, also known as El Hashi Sharif Abdu Ali. Moors today refer to him as Prophet. Why? Because he brought them out of darkness into the light, out of truth, bringing them their nationality, birthright, and divine creed. How many, who else, anybody know anybody else that did that besides Prophet Noah Ali? Anybody else come in and told us who we were? Absolutely not. I don't care where they came from or what they say in every offshoot there is. No one else came here and said, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It is time to wake up. So if you're sleeping after tonight, you should be awake because nationality is the order of the day. Let me hear y'all say that again, because that's what's on our plate. Nationality is what? The order of today. The order of today. That's what nationality is. So let's talk a little bit about El Hashik Sharif Abdul Ali. Okay. He says, and this is in, okay, in the Moorish, if you have the Who Are You book under nationality is, well, I have that the today, but it says, if you go down where it says through sin and disobedience right under it's still under fact three. Are you there with me? Okay. So people say, why did we suffer? Why is it that we went through what we went through? Well, let's see what the prophet told us in the literature, and then you can research for yourself. It says, through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery. 
due to the fact they are not the creed and purpose of their forefathers. That is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774, and the word Negro, black, and colored was given to the Asians of America who were of Moorish descent. Because they are not the purpose of their mother and father, and straight out the gods of Europe to whom they knew nothing of. And you can find it in the Circle Seven in the Holy Quran, Boy Scientific of America, chapter 47, Egypt, the capital empire of the Dominion of Africa. So now, let me ask you a question. When you didn't obey your parents when you were a child, what happened to you? I absolutely recommend and punish. So let me, so now we're talking about the great God, and if you don't want to believe in religion or whatever, most people believe in there is a deity or something beyond ourselves that created us, right? So if something created you, they would have to be your parents. That's right. All right? So if you disobey your parents, is there not repercussions to disobeying your parents? Yes. So, all right, so you disobey your parents, you get kicked out of the house, and you can't come back. So you decide that I don't have to listen to them, I'm going to start my own thing. So you get kicked into the caucus mountains. So you get kicked out, and then what? Most of the people get kicked out, shack up with somebody, and start a family, right? So we get kicked out of the holy city, and we go to the caucus mountains where we're expanding to, and we start amalgamating with animals up there and doing experiments. So now, let me ask you something. Is that not disobedient? Yes. Absolutely. Disobedient to your parent. And so therefore, so you're starting to try to create something and I created you now, you want to supersede me and try to create something else. Are you going to be punished for that? Yes. That's that old Frankenstein story. You ever, everybody seen Frankenstein? Yes. Create your own what? Monster. Monster. And it turns on you, right? right? Is that the story of Frankenstein? Yes. How many of you have never seen the story of Frankenstein? No? Never? That's why you look puzzled. <laughs> you, need to go, <laughs> you need to go watch the story of Frankenstein. <laughs> So that's what happened to Frankenstein. Everybody knows that they started trying to educate Frankenstein and all that, and then Frankenstein wound up turning on the master, right? right. That's what happened to us more. We simply did not obey. Look at our history. We got kicked out of everywhere. We got kicked out of Spain. We got kicked out of Ireland. Shoot. Even we got kicked out of, when we were over there with uh, the other nations, Canaanites, Teletites, Joshua kicked us out. Right, so we get kicked out everywhere we go because we don't want to be obedient. And so obedience is a really key thing to be able to do, but now we don't have to be obedient to someone who treats you bad. Obedience is supposed to be to your parents, so you should be obedient to your parent, right? And that's something that we were not obedient. So this is why we're suffering today. But the good thing about that is that a prophet comes when the people call out. And finally, our time was, when we got released from slavery, we didn't know where to go. We were totally lost because the brainwashing effect was terrible. I call it the eraser effect. They erased everything out your brain. So now, let's take this. So now, both of us together, we go, so let's say, to the Woodson slave masses. So we go to the Woodsons. We have children. The Woodsons separate our children from us and they give it to the Bristol clan, right? So now the Bristol clan got our children. We have no connection with our children. So then me and to the Tamarind are friends, but we too close. So now the master gonna do what? Gonna separate me and Tamar because we too close. And she got a name like Tamar. I'm gonna give a Christian name like Becky. You name Rebecca now, girl here. You Rebecca now, okay? So they gonna give you names that you can't identify with. Right, because those names to them, they, I don't like those names. So you got a name like Tara, so I'm going to call you Rebecca, so I'm going to change your name. So then after a well, while, if you want another plantation, people call you Rebecca. He didn't tell me that he called you Rebecca. So can I find Tara? Absolutely not, unless I'm asking questions and someone else tells me. So then you got the lighter complected sisters, right? So say, this sister over here, what's your name, sister? Delia, beautiful name, Delia. So this is Delia, lighter complex sister, right? So now I got Delia coming on the plantation. I'm going to put Delia in the house, and I'm going to leave Delia out in the field because she's darker. She's going to resent Delia because Delia in the house, right? So I'm going to call confusion between them two. So I'm going to drop some things. I'm going to show special attention to Delia, and I'm going to whip 
the real and I'm gonna let the Leah watch her being ripped. Is she gonna resent me? Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm gonna give her a scratch from the table, but I'm gonna watch her let the Leah eat the good food after the master leave it. Is uh, she gonna resent me? Absolutely not, because we don't see a difference in one another. So he made the difference and said, that sister's lighter, she darker. So we're gonna take that dark witch, because that's what they called us, witches. We're going to take the dark winch and the light winch and we're going to turn them against one another. So then they rape the sisters and then they have lighter complected children. So what am I going to do now with the lighter complected children? I'm going to take the lighter complected children. I'm going to mail to make them back with the children on my plantation that look lighter. So we're going to get a lighter complected people. I'm going to keep the dark ones on this way. They're going to be cast out. So we're going to make this difference in division. And we still do that today. As a matter of fact, even the mothers in the very household we live in, if the sister or brother is lighter, the mother treats that one better, not consciously realizing she's doing the same thing that they did on the plantation. So we got siblings growing up hating each other because of complexion differences. And it's not, it, the child only is perfect is what the parent is. That's what it tells us in the Quran if you have a, a creation and fall of man. So if the parent is teaching this, then the children sublimely are learning this too. So then if I grow up and I'm doing the same thing in my household to my children, generationally it becomes a what? A generational curse. Okay? And this is the curse of Ham. This is the curse. The division between the father and the son. This is the division. So we got a division going on right in our own house. So if this is just heavier, this one's thinner. This one's darker. This one's hair is longer. This one's hair is wavier. This one's hair is darker. We resent what we don't we don't want them to have. We're taught that hate our hair because it's naturally nappy and kinky. So what do we do with somebody else's hair in our head? Do you know you got somebody else's dead cells in your head? You walk around with somebody else if you don't believe it, look it up. Hair is an extension of cells. And when you put someone else's hair in your head, why do you think you're acting crazy now when you got this stuff that don't match your hair? I see these sisters coming over from what they consider the motherland, Africa. They think they better. They come over here, hair is kinkier than mine, and they put this straight, your piece straight in their hair, and you're looking at the root. You can't think straight because you got somebody else's hair in your head, and you can't think straight. I tell sisters, I know they hate me when I say it, but you know what? I'm not here to be like, I'm here to tell you the truth, snatch that stuff about your head, start thinking again. Because your hair is your connection to the universe. It's your chakras. It is your antennas that the universe is telling you what's going on. That's why we keep our head in custom covered so things don't get into our head, don't seep into our head. Let the knowledge seep in. Not all that garbage that's out there. No one should have to see your hair except for the people inside your home. Your hair should not have to be exposed to everyone. It's not for everyone else. It's for you and your family to enjoy. So we're used to us coming out here. I see some sisters wrap their turban, and got their locks hanging all out their turban. I have locks too, mine's as long, mine's is all up in here. You don't have to, your hair, everybody knows whether you have hair or not, it's not necessary. You can be bald, who cares? Wrap your circle around your head. Keep those passion desires in the bounds of righteousness. Brothers, put your feathers on your head. Keep the circle around your hair, keep it in the bounds of righteousness. These things all have significant meanings for us. But if you're not taught any better, you don't know any better, then that's all that you know. I don't want to wrap my hair. I don't want to cover my head up. I don't want to do that. I don't want to wear those clothes. Look at me. I'm beautiful. Whenever I go somewhere, including your peace, it kills them. But I don't like what you got on. That color sure is pretty. That's nice. They can't help but making a compliment, even though they know it's killing them in their face. You go look at their face, see, it hurts them. Every time they see a sister like me walking outside, they know my rise is their fall. Absolutely. Yes. This is the consciousness that we must have with one another. We have to learn how to love one another first. We can't love anyone else until we learn to love ourselves. So first it starts with them. Love yourself. Stop calling yourself nickel, black, and color. Don't, if you're having a conversation and call yourself nickel, black, and color with someone else besides me, then that means you still have not put in your head that you're not these things. So you feel like that you have to adopt to have a conversation with someone else being something that you are not. I don't care who I'm talking to. If they say something like, but I had a professor one time in the college, 
when I was in school, and me and her got into it to the point where she asked me to leave the classroom. Because she just kept saying to me, well, you know what I mean. No, I do not know what you mean. <laughs> See, the thing is, you're not going to make me be black. I don't care who you are, or what conversation you have, what parents you have, what your age is, who you are to me. I'm not going to be black for your convenience. I'm never going to be dead. I'm not going to be black. I'm not going to be in an unconscious state. I'm not going to do that. And as far as status goes, I am never going to be unacceptable because that's what black is status-wise. All right? I'm never going to be anybody's Negro because if you look up Negro anywhere, it means beast. I'm never going to be a beast. So that's why in the literature it even says that Negro has no pride in it at all. You don't have anybody else calling themselves a Negro. And I don't care how the rappers say it, nigga. My nigga don't get no bigger. You my nigga. In the slang dictionary, now they got one for Tupac Shakur redefined the word nigga. Who's Tupac Shakur? But another brother who was born conscious who became unconscious. Like seriously, am I gonna follow Tupac? But if you keep the minds of the people who wanna follow that, then you can see, oh, I can call him a nigga because it's fine. It's not acceptable. I'm not going to ever be colored. I don't care who I'm talking to because I'm not paying the same bar should die. No one's going to call me. I'm not fake. I'm not assimilation of the truth. I am the real thing. Look at me. I am real. I'm not going to ever be in these things. I'm never going to be Ethiopian because I'm not going to be divided or division between my brothers and sisters. I'm not going to have that. I'm going to love you whether you love you or not. I'm going to talk to you, speak to you, hug you, touch you, and talk to you. And I'm going to keep telling in nationality is the order of the what? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Islam. So the Islam question? Islam. No. Oh, okay. I thought somebody had a question. All right. All right. So let's go. So we talk about the divine origin of the Asiatic nation. Uh, if you have the, um, who, if you have the more spiritual or if you have, the information of the Moore's book is the divine origin of the Asiatic nation. All right, and it says, the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America need to learn to love instead of hate and to know their higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Holy Quran of Mecca for the teaching and instruction of all Moorish Americans, ETC. Here we go, number two. The key, I'm going to say that again, I like that. The key, I'm going to say that again. The key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations. What nation are you? Asiatic. Asiatic nation. The Moors, who were the ancient Moabites, the founders of the holy city of Mecca. The Egyptians, who were the Hamitites and a direct descendant of Mizraim. The Arabians, the seed of Hagar. Japanese and Chinese. The Hindus of India, the descendants of the ancient Canaanite, Hittites, and Moabites of the land of Canaan. The Asiatic nations of North, South, and Central America, the Moorish Americans and Mexicans of North America, Brazilians, Argentines, and children of South America, Colombians, Nicaraguans, and the natives of San Salvador and Central America, ETC. All of these are Muslims. Where's the European at? Who is the majority and who is the minority? The Absolutely, we are the majority. Y'all got questions on your brain. I just read to you all the people, the Turks are the true descendants of Hagar, who, see, who received, chief protector of Hagar, who received, excuse me, the Turks are the, the Turks are the sins of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic freedom of Mecca, beginning from Mohammed the first, the founder of the United Islam. All right, and so that tells you right there, if you look at all of the nations that I just talked about, you don't see it, the Europeans is very few of them. But they tell you that they're the majority and we are a minority. But if you look at the globe, what I just read from North, South, and Central America, in these land masses, then he is actually the minority, not the majority. Does everyone get that? Yes. Uh, Question marks on your brain. Does anyone get that? Do you have any books, brothers, again? Oh, no, I got, got it right here. Oh, I'm just wondering if you thought, oh, you just listening. No, nah, I wrote down what I need, so I'm, I'm following. Oh, all right. I just want to make sure. All right. All right, so we're going to go on down. So I'm going to go to uh, Sora 47. When I say Sora, this chapter. I'm going to go all the way down to, uh, if you have the book, it says, I'm going to go to Ayah 9. That means verse 9. It says, according to all true and divine records of the human race, what is our race again? The human race. Human race. There is no Negro, black, or color race attached to the human family because all of the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the 
human race, right? Human race, descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the holy land of Canaan. Were your ancient forefathers where you are today without that or contradiction? Were your ancient forefathers where you are today without what? Doubt or contradiction. Let's put that word down in there. Without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the decent nature of his forefathers unless his powers extend beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. Anybody know anybody's powers to extend that great? Whatever, uh, whatever, however you see him or whatever degree you see him on, do you know anybody more powerful than your creator? Absolutely not. All right, so let's go to act, let's go to fact fact number five. Sheik, you want to do fact number five for me? This is Sheik Dawood Allah Tubey, our pig star secretary of state of the Moorish nation. My right hand. This is fact number five. El Ha Sheik Sharif Abdul Shabazz Ali established an entire movement dedicated to teaching more the truth about the divine birthright and creed. His efforts were so successful that more today are vowing to add six of the divine constitution and bylaws, teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed so that they may know that they are not Negroes, black folks, colored people, or Ethiopians, because these were names given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. It's not missing, man. You just come right there. So, nationality again is what today? What of the day? All right. <clears throat> Go ahead to uh, fact six. Um, see. Fact six. When Moors take on their free national names, they are honoring their mothers and fathers so that their days may be long upon this earth land. In parentheses, continuing the legacy on to their children. In parentheses, El Haj Sheikh Sharif Abdul Shabazz Ali addressed in his speech the cares of the world. The citizens of all three national governments, according to the national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And in any sin, and it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and principles that do delude to slavery. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced, forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, there is no more right. It is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name and himself to give it. He is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name, because they place their trust upon issues and names formed by their forefathers. I'm talking over to you already. That's excerpts from uh, the divine one by the prophet for the nation. I just had that little part there, in there. But now, so this is a really key thing here. So you heard that we just gave you nationality of all these other people. So if all these other people are forced to proclaim their nationality, is it no more than right that we should do what? Okay, what is your nationality? I, I, don't, I don't sound like y'all too sure. Americans. Americans, Americans, absolutely. Not without doubt or contradiction, right? So now, let's bring up this word citizen because you know it's a lot of controversy out there about being a citizen. How many know the true definition of the word citizen? Citizen is a slave. True definition of citizen. Now, I didn't say corporate citizen. I said true citizen. A citizen is one who is the natural inhabitant of the land. Let's look up citizen. We got Black Laws Dictionary. Check 
So it's important because when you, if you, if I'm telling you that you're free, and then I'm telling you you are an American citizen, we know that American, right, is what we said earlier was the natural complex of color people, right? All right, sister, go ahead. You, you got the definition of citizen. Okay, citizen, noun, a person who by their birth or naturalization, I'm sorry, I need glasses, is a member of a political community owing allegiance to the community and being entitled to enjoy all its civil rights and protections. A member of the civil state entitled to all of its privileges. All right, there we go. Oh, there's no yeah. All right, so um, now is that a slave? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I didn't say we didn't say corporate citizen. We said a citizen. See, we have to remember the Prophet Noah Ali is the navigator of this shit, right? He is the one who came here to bestow the information back on us. So if he's telling us to wake up, you're not men of black and colored, you're not slaves. Would he give us something to put us back in slavery? Would it make any sense? So if he told you you are true American citizen. And he said that all people should proclaim their free national status, and if they are forced to proclaim it, then why not you? Why do you think that man don't want you to have a nationality? See, today I'm going to share with you all some, um, I teach uh, a co at college, I teach law at some of the colleges. And so I asked one of the professors to ask your students, and I asked some of my students, to do an essay or information on the importance of nationality. And I have that for you all today, too. Like I said, I can't put it up on the screen. So you're all going to get copies of that, and you're going to be astounded what these people have to say about the importance of nationality. Because it is what? The order of the day. Order of the day. Absolutely. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to, we're going to give you the information about it. And that way you can make an informed decision for yourself. So, so I just want to clear that up on citizen because I know people get kind of eerie when they hear the word citizen because they've been told so many different things about the word citizen. But true essence, there's nothing wrong with being a citizen in your own government, in your own land, because you are the true American citizen. The sound boards? So now don't let nobody think you think you're a slave, bro. Because you were a citizen. No, I was answering corporate. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, we're not talking about the corporation because we free. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all right. We're all here to learn. I learn every single day. Being born and raised in this movement, I learn every day. This is, I didn't introduce myself, and I do apologize for that. Just let me take a minute and do that. Uh, we just got started kind of late. But I am Prime Minister Grant. She gets to be a day of the Moorish Nation, Moorish Science of America, Divine and National Movement. Our Rinky headquarters is located in Bell Camp, Maryland. I was born and raised in Moore Science. I'm fourth generation Moore Science. Mom. 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 Yes, Mom, I heard you little babe over there. Yes, Mom, from the mouth of a babe. All right, and so that's some of the things I want to do. Uh, did you find your definition? Oh, did we have to bring it up now? Okay. Not yet. Oh, all right. She's still saying, okay. All right, so if these ones that I gave you, did you print out these are the ones that I gave you, or these are the ones you already gave? Okay. Okay. I, because they're going to be getting what I have, so I was just going to try to go by what I already had. Okay. All right, so you all, like I said, will be getting Dr. Ayala, make sure. That if you have um, flash drives with you, um, the information could be um, on the flash drive. I'm not sure how much you charge to download the information on the flash drive. Um, I only have, only have the one that's flash drive because 
Okay. 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 No, I'm just saying that um, I don't know if I sent you an email. You got an email, right? I don't know if I sent you. I, I sent email to you today. You got it at home. Oh, that's right. All right. Well, let's go. But she gave me his definition here, so she can't see uh, my screen. Um, I want to go over nation. There's a pretty extensive information here on the na on nation. Okay. So, Mo, you want to go over what you have here for nation? But one of the things you want to talk about as a nation is because what we're trying to do at the, at the Morris Nation headquarters is we're trying to build a nation. I, we have a school. I'm not sure how many of you all know about the online Morris schooling that we have for our children. The Dr. Nyola has the brochures over there. For anybody interested, one of the things about a nation of people is you have everything. We're going to read what a nation is, and then we're going to talk about some of the things that a nation has. But in order to first identify yourself with a nation, you must have nationality, you must have the birthrights. And then religion, let's talk about that for a minute. Because religion itself, I just need to walk around standing still more crazy. Religion itself is law, order, and governmental principles. So a lot of times when people are thinking about religion, they think about uh, in the church jumping up and down, hallelujah. Which there's nothing wrong with hallelujah. I mean, y'all know that that's saying praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Write it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah meaning praise, right? Oh, Lord. Look at the word. You write hallelujah down, break it down. It means praise and the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? So there's nothing wrong with that, too, right? But it's just that you are taught the wrong thing about the word, right? Because remember, it's supposed to be he brought it right from the Hebrew language, right? Hallelujah meaning praise. So we know that obviously we didn't just speak this particular language that we're talking today. We had several different tribes speaking several different languages, right? So one of the things about a nation is we have law, order, and governmental principles. That's what religion is. Look it up. All right? So in order to have a nation, that means we have to have some law, right? Everybody needs to obey the law, right? Then we have law. Then we have the government, right? In government, we have to have some principles. Who would want to live in a society with no law, no order, and no principles? Who wants to live in that kind of community? No law, no order, and no principles. That's what religion is. Because I hear a lot of people say, I don't want the religion. They get tested. That, that, I don't want the religion. I don't want to be moral. I don't want to have any values. I don't want to have any principles. I don't want to live with you in the same community. You can be an outcast, right? But that's what religion truly is. We're not talking about jumping up and down and screaming and shouting. We're talking about the true essence of what religion is. All right? And so in a nation, we have all of these things that combine us as a nation. And it's really important. So I would love to leave out of my house and I go to Sister Tamara's house. We're in the same community. And I smell the um, lentils cooking. And an organic cornbread. So I know if I go to Sister Tamara's house, I don't have to worry about what I'm eating. She's going to invite me in because we're in a band of society. We feed each other. We talk to each other. We communicate with one another, right? That's what a nation is. We have the same common goals, the same interests. We have our own school. Our children play together. Our husbands work together. The sisters make clothes together. We teach the children. Now, don't you want to live in that kind of community? Yeah. Absolutely, but the European that tell you, she's bad, he's bad, she's light, she's too dark, her dress is too short, her dress is too long, her hair is too nappy, her children are too ignorant, her children are bad. And we fall for whatever he says, whispering. And then he plants an agent in your community. And she go around to everybody's house. Now 
to go over here to this brother. I'm the snake, right? So I'm just going to keep going over and over. Hey, brother, did you hear about me? Absolutely, right? That's what happens. And then what does it do? It tears your family apart. My father watches this show called Maury Porridge every morning. And this morning was a really good episode on there because it was sisters. The sister lied to the other sister about her man. Yeah, you know, the sisters, we love our men, right? So she lied, so she took it to Maury. God take it to the great European hope, right? Come to find out that the long story short, at the end, she lied to her sister about her man. Cause division, right? So then they bring the psychologist on to find out why she lied. And she said, because my family was moving on without me. You mean they can't grow? They can't move on? And so because you're afraid to lose your sister, you cause confusion in her household. That's the bloodline that she knows familiar with, her sister. And so it's easy for us to fall short of those things. So what should her sister have done when she felt as though her sister was pulling away from her? Open up her mouth and talk to her. Look, sis, I know you got your new man, right? But I think we should spend some quality time together. Let's do some sister things. What do you think? A uh, uh, wonderful idea, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you know, just let your man know this so it don't be no problem, though, right? All right, absolutely. Absolutely. Was it easier to talk to my sister than to lie and take her on national television? Look like a bunch of buffoons up there is what we look like, but we're entertainment for the masses of people because they still they got the vision in our communities when they see it. Imagine no Maury with none of us there. Maury with none of us. he go out of business. Absolutely. Most of these talk shows would go out of business because they make it on our virtues of our ignorance and the world seeing it. So other nations think, what about us? They think that's us. Especially the men. Do you know that our brothers that come from over in Nigeria and those things where they claim to be today, look at us as we're absolutely whores. I just put it out there. That's what they think. I talked to a lot of them. I asked you, why do you think that? Why do you think that I would be easy? What makes you think that? Because that's the mentality that's put out there. Absolutely. So we have to change the narrative, right? We have to change the way people are seeing us. In order to do that, we have to stop clinging to those things that dilute to slavery. And all of those type of terms take us back to the slave state of mind. Absolutely. I'm going to turn it over to Sheikha Yayoli, you to read the um, definition of nationality. Um, definition of nationality, this is uh, from the Black Law Force uh, Dictionary, Fourth Edition. Nationality. That quality or character which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. Nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines its civil status. Nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. According to Sabin, Nationality is also used as opposed to territoriality for the purposes of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. Islam. That's all definition. That was it you had for nationality? Yes. Yes, okay. Let's go to nation, please. Nation. We heard first of all, everybody, any questions on nationality? Anybody got that? Islam. All right, let's go to nation. Uh, definition of nation, uh, the same Black Law for tradition, nation and people. Now this is a long definition. A people or aggregation of men existing in the form of an organized rural society, usually inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth, speaking the same language, 
using the same customs, possessing historic continuity, and distinguished from other Latin groups by their racial origin and characteristics, and generally, but not necessarily, living under the same government and sovereignty. Besides the element of autonomy or self-government, that is, the independence of the community as a whole from the interface of any foreign power in its affairs or any subjection to such power, it is further necessary to the constitution of a nation that it should be an organized rural society that is both governing its own members by regular laws and defining and protecting their rights and respecting the rights and duties which attach to it as a constituent member of the family of nations. I'm gonna skip down. The word nation and people are frequently used as synonyms but there is a great difference between them. A nation is an aggregation of men speaking the same language, having the same customs, and endowed with certain moral qualities which distinguish them from other groups of a like nature. It will follow from this definition that a nation is destined to form only one state, and that it constitutes one individual whole, indivisible whole. Nevertheless, the history of every age presents us with nations divided into several states. Thus, Italy was for centuries divided among several different governments. The people is the collection of all citizens without distinct rank or order. All men living under the same government compose the people of the state. In relation to the state, the citizens constitute the people. In relation to the human race, they constitute the nation. A free nation is one not subject to a foreign government, whatever be the constitution of the state. A people is free when all citizens can participate in a certain measure in the direction and in the examination of public affairs. The people is the political body brought into existence by a community of laws, and the people may perish with these laws. The nation is the moral body, independent of political revolutions, because it is constituted by inborn qualities which rendered it indissoluble. The state is the people organized into a political body. Uh, in American constitutional law, the word state is applied to the several members of the American Union, while the word nation is applied to the whole body of the people embraced within the jurisdiction of the federal government. Mr. Wow. Ms. Thomas, I'm going to ask you to speak about Any questions on nationality or nation? You have a question, Mark? Uh, no, question. no question. <laughs> All right, so from the definition, I know it seems like a long definition, but from the definition of nationality, the definition of nation, is that something we're trying to do? Absolutely, yes, no? Yes. Yes. All right, so let's look at what Prophet Noah Jolly told us about a nation, because that's important. One thing he said is a nation can rise no higher than this woman. So if woman is being stumped down, beat down, dragged down, Treated badly, are we ever going to rise? Yeah. Absolutely. Mother is when everything comes to life, comes from mother. So, Prophet Noah Jolly, can you hold up, uh, um, Mufti Shantanee, can you hold up the, that, yes, for me, please. On the front of the 101s, the questionnaire, also called the cares of the world by some people, what is the prophet holding up right there? Woman. Woman. And what's written across her womb? Humanity. humanity. And he says in this literature that humanity must be pulled up in the ups, ups, ups and holds of life. So life had us down, right? And so the prophet knew that when mother's down, the nation's down, right? So he had to come back and uplift mother. So when we start thinking again, moving again, breathing again, then the nation can move again, right? And mother's doing her job because her mother's job is to teach, right? <coughs> So a mother is teaching the children, if she's the one that's teaching the children, then our children are going to have a different outlook on life, aren't they? If yeah. mothers woke, the children will be what? Woke. Woke, absolutely. So let's go into what Prophet Noah Jolly told us about nation, about being a nation, a people. It's so important, and I don't think that people, then we're going to go into all of the things that all these declarations talk about is nations. And so, can you identify with something that you have no knowledge of? 
So if you don't know that you're a nation, if you don't know you have a nationality, when someone's talking about these things that pertain to it, can you relate to you? No. Absolutely not. And so now it's time to wake up. All right, so let's go to. Oh, that's what I was actually wanted to see. If you have the Moorish literature, um, we're going to go to the Moorish literature. So when you leave here today, you can't say Prime Minister told me this and that because I use reference tools. All right, so we're going to go to the reference tools here. I want to come from the divine point by the prophet. Um, if you have this portion of literature right here, uh, it's on page two. If you have a different one, just go to the one that you're, where it's at in that book. Um, it depends on who printed it. All right, I want to come from <clears throat> I'm going to start right from the beginning what it says. It says the citizens of all free national governments, according to the national constitution, are one family, bear one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it's a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and principles that delude to slavery. To stop there. So if your name is not Bay Ali or Neil, if you carry around names like Susan, Rebecca, and Jones, and all of those good things, you're not carrying around your free national name, and you're deluding to slavery. I don't care whose name it is, I don't care if your grandmother gave it to you, your godmother, I don't care who gave it to you, they were in an unconscious state. The only way you can make it right to correct the wrong is by correcting in your conscious state. It's not more Wow. It says, I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God of love to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and to go back to the state of mind of their forefathers' divine and natural principles. That are, they will be law abiders and receive their divine rights as citizens according to the free national constitution that are prepared for all free national beings. Who was the constitution prepared for again? All free national beings. All free. So if you are a slave, the Constitution don't apply to you unless you're talking about what amendments? The 14th and 15th amendments, right? All right, those are for people who are slaves. All right? Absolutely. For sure. If yes, I sir. could jump in, it seems like a good point to make a correction. That was the slavery I was talking about until you nationalized. Oh, I just what you talking about, though. That's not, I just want to make sure that you had the correct citizen. It's not strict rhyme for that. Absolutely. We all here now. This is the house of what? Reawakening. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are to their own free natural name and religion. Let me go back. They are to their own free natural name and religion. There's the one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth. And it comes only through the connection of the more divine and national movement, or the more national and divine movement. Is there any other place that can help you with your nationality and birthrights? Can the court systems, they can change your name, but can they proclaim your status for you? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We are the only ones that have the power to do so. And, uh, excuse me, okay, so, uh, and, uh, okay, divine national, okay. Government through the connection to more divine national movement. With this co-op, is incorporated with this government, recognized by all other nations of the world, and through it, their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as been existing conditions for many generations. So that means we don't have a privilege to vote, we have a what to vote? A right. A right to vote. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law and the city hall and among the officials of your government, and ask them in an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a fair reply, for they are glad to see me bring out, you out of darkness into light. Here we go. Money doesn't make the man. Money doesn't what? Doesn't make the man or woman. It is free national standards and power that makes a man a nation. 
So if you don't have standards and power, then you can't have a nation, can you? Absolutely not. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens. It belongs to what? Let me go to it. The wealth of all natural governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your natural citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. So if you don't have your free national name, do you have any wealth? No. You are still a what? A slave. Oh. Help me in my great missionary work. Please help me in my great missionary work. Because I am, uh, because I need support of all true American citizens. So now the definition today, are you a true American citizen? Yes. Absolutely. I need your help then. Are you United States of America? Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. I'm depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fall again. That they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our own free natural constitution of the United States of America. Force that constitution. I love my people. I really do. I love my people and I desire their unity of mind back to their own free national and divine standard. I keep hearing national here. National. Y'all keep hearing the same word I'm hearing here. National. By claiming names and persons that are unconstitutional. So if you are claiming a name that has this unconstitutional, do you expect anyone else to respect you? No. So why do you think that you're being treated you like that when you have his name? When you're celebrating his holidays? I know I have a little joke out at the Bible for you all where this uh, brother has on a, a, a green and so the European asked him, are you Irish? He's not, not on green, don't I? We don't, we, if you don't have your own information, you celebrate whatever comes up, and that's just not right. So you know you're insulting people when you're proclaiming uh, things that belong to you? Do you know you're celebrating things that put you in slavery? When this European celebrating, he's celebrating your fall, and you follow right along with him. You just celebrate now, it's a holiday with a big old spot. It's a holiday! <laughs> <laughs> Woo, all right. Oh my goodness. All right. By claiming that the presidents are unconstitutional, if Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right that the law should be enforced for all American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised here and asks for his natural decent name and he fails to give it, he is misused in prison or exile. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standard of law by name or purpose, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your natural decent name. Because they place their trust in their nation name formed by their forefathers. So who are you honoring when you proclaim the name? Yeah, our, forefathers. our forefathers and foremothers. That's who we're honoring. So other nations honor their parents, why can't we? Why are we the only people that don't acknowledge anything of our own? We're asleep, we're unconscious. Do you know the true definition of the word sleep is in an unconscious state? Which I just can't imagine being woke and going back to sleep. How do you rest at night? I can't even lay on my pillow at night with the information in my head. So how do you just turn off the light? I guess what you have to do, right? Turn off the light and go back to sleep. Anytime you see another more, it's gonna trigger the light. Every time you see a turbine or fast, it's gonna trigger the light, right? That's how we got turned back on in the first place. The prophet had to turn on the light. All right, and that's what you need to do is turn it on. So whenever you walk out of your house with your turbans and fences on, the lights turn on. Just as when you dress in your garbs and clothing, men ain't looking up under your dress trying to see what's there. They're holding doors open for you. That's what they're doing. They're respecting you. And you know they love our men already. So when our men walk around, they fences all tall. Now we're going to stand up straight. That's the intelligent man, right? They like that. And so what's the matter with us? 
that we don't want to put on our own things. We want to wear everybody else's clothes. We want to wear green. Yes, it is what's in our flag. That's what the Irish got it from, green, what it represents. But they use it to symbolize their own heritage. And yes, we were in Ireland and we got kicked out, but we were still Moors in Ireland. All right, we didn't claim their national status, and we don't expect them to claim ours. How many of y'all saw on Facebook a whole bunch of them doing St. Patty's Day had on red with the feathers on and black face? Did any of you all go to, didn't see that? But I have to share that with you all before we leave here today. On Facebook, yes, they were celebrating us. So now everybody else celebrates us but us. So let me tell you, if the true boys were not us, would they have painted on black face? No. Absolutely not. What would be the point? Would it even be fun to do it? They did it because they're going to get away because we what? We sleep. We sleep, boys. It's time to wake up. The word Negro, the loose to the Latin language of the word nigger. The same as the word color, to lose anything that is painted, stained, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a natural, decent name of their forefathers, because honor their fathers and mothers the days will be left upon the earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizen of the day. Did you hear what I said? Never been recognized. So what makes you think they're going to recognize it today? It has never been recognized. So that means as long as you carry those names, can you be a citizen? Can you be an American citizen? No. Do you have a nationality? No. Where is your birthright? You don't have any. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth. Ooh, let me read that again. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth. So, we have a sister right now who's incarcerated. Every time she uses her free natural name, they tell her they're going to punish her for using it. Toby. Say that again, Mo. Toby. Toby said, no, there you go. Kuta <laughs> 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 Kinta. <laughs> what? Kuta <laughs> Kinta. Did he wind up submitting, though? Yes. They had to take his foot, though. They had to take his foot. They would have to take my life. Because I'm not going to be nickel, black, and color for nobody. You have to have no fear of death, Morris. You have to understand of death, and you have no fear of death. So I'm not trying to say, you know, I can just get yourself killed for no reason. But I'm saying, if you ask me about my national level, you want to blow my head off, you might as well go ahead and blow my head off. I'm not even going to answer for you. You might as well just go in and do it. Because if I do that, I'm selling out. And if I sell it, I can't live with myself. Mm. I can't do that. So I'm never, I'm not afraid to tell the truth. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by the natural government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendments brought the North and South in unit placing the Southerners who were at that time without power with the constitutional body of power. So what was it they used to do? It was used to give them the constitutional body of power, but they had no power. So they had to use the 14th and 15th Amendment. Study that constitution more. Without power. At that time, 1865, the Free National Constitutional Law was enforced. Since 1774 declared all men equal and free. We know what document that was in 1774. The Declaration of what was it called, sister? Independence. Since that declared that all men free and equal, and since that declaration has never been changed, then there is no need for what? The application of the 14th and 15th Amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. So, there is only but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost. It was what again? It was lost. It didn't go anywhere, it was just lost. When something is lost, it can be found. And that is through the above statements. The lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed, because love, true peace, freedom, and justice will be riding in this land in those days. The United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world, where the above, above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. 
It's already here. They killed us off in the street. They pick a nigga every day. Pick a nigga and shoot him. Pick a nigga and shoot him. That's right. There you go. Because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people. And this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquake disease, ETC. Don't we got the tsunami and all that going on right now? All right. And I have a problem. You hear my plea? believe that this administration of the government being more wisely prepared. What are we now today more wisely prepared? And ingenuous citizens that believe in their free national constitution. You got to do what with it? Believe. Believe in the free national constitutional laws and through the help of such classes of citizens. I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of men. So who uh, are you going to be found when they were black and color? Merely ideas of men. And some of the women out there too. Man means woman too. Yes, indeed. Because it's not good and always harmed them. So I have a prophet and hereby calling with a loud and divine plea. I'm calling with a loud and divine plea. As the prophet says, loud and divine plea. All true American citizens to help me to remove this racism which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America. Because they know it is not the true and divine way. And without understanding, here we go. I know some of y'all want to overstand. Some of y'all want to understand, but it's nothing wrong with understanding because it's the rock on which we build ourselves. It's not, so I can't overstand because I gotta understand first. So if I understand that I'm half a prophet, if I understand I'm confused because I'm in between, but if I'm understanding, I'm picking that thing up and I'm ready to go. Understand that I've fallen from the true light into other darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today and there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically. So why are we not being recognized again? Because we are what? Using another man's name, Christian names, slave names, not proclaim who you are. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. Black and I'm proud. Play James Brown. All that fear to make that record. And then before he died, got on national television and made a public apology to his own people. Black and I'm proud, though. Say it loud. Okay. Black power. All right. That's dead power. So again, they will be never be recognized socially. Religiously, politically, or economically, ETC, that means this goes on and on, in their present condition. So we're here to help you change your condition. Y'all want some help? Change your condition. And their endeavor, which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world, they will not refrain from their simple ways of action, and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism. And Jim Crow got children. Jim Crow ism, ism on anything means the practice of Jim Crow ism. So are we still living in Jim Crow ism today? Yes, we are. Segregation and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they want the southern for all these great misuses. Point, point this out. But I have traveled, he said, in the south and have examined conditions there, and it's the work of my people continuously practicing the things that bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect. Ooh, listen to those Ds. Dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect. Those are the three days. What are they? Dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. Ooh, so why are those other people that want to be bothered with us when they come over here? Dishonor, So now, are you mad at them when they come over here and I want to talk to you? Because you understand that why they act that way. So what are we to do? I had them calling me up talking about how can I proclaim my 
bring back the name because I'm on the 14th Amendment decree. They asked it to be bailed. They said, it was a, we can't even get most of our people to wake up and see that that's what they need to be doing. Whew. And I am in my call on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness and tomorrow's light from the problem. Ooh, it's fine, boys. It's fine, it's fine. So, Prophet Noah Drew Ali had a very hard job, very difficult job. He came here to wake up the masses of people and tell me. So, he said, Come and hear the truth about your nationality and birthright because you are not Negroes. Do you know how hard that was? But guess what? Those who heard him obviously knew something was what? Wrong. He said, you're not Negroes, couples, black people, or Ethiopians. So he told us to come and wake up. So I'm putting that same plea out there to wake up. And because you are here, that means you are interested in waking up. And we appreciate you for that. But not only do you have to wake up, you have to go all the way. And you gotta proclaim that which was what? Lost. I got some listeners up in here. That which was lost. So it was taken away from you, it was hidden away. But now there is nothing to keep you from doing what you need to do. What is that? So I don't know what's taking people so long. It doesn't take much to do it. And we got the documents right here today for you all to do that. Proclaim your free national day. I want to give me a drink and I'm going to go into some of the letters that I promise you all you'll get copies of those letters of some students talking about the importance of nationality. Take five minutes and drink some water. Oh, yeah, if you want to start reading your letters, I'm going to do that now because we just have a law. Okay. What happens? Mm -hmm. 
we can do that now. We're still we're, we're live. We're still live. Everything is live. Okay. So, so this is what you want to do? Yeah. Okay. So this is what you want to do? Yeah. The concept of nationalities and ethnic minorities is that's the first level. No, you don't have to read the whole thing, but just the that you can speak around it. Like I just want to highlight some of the things. Right. I don't think they'll highlight, but some of them are short. nationality is important. These are essays by law students. Uh, first letter. The concept of nationality is important since it determines the benefits to which a person may be entitled and the obligation such as conscript conscription which they must perform. The problem is that there is no coherent accepted definition of nationality in international law and only confliction description under the different municipal laws of states. Not only that, but the rights and duties attendant upon nationality vary from state to state. By the virtue of nationality, a person becomes entitled to a series of rights ranging from obtaining a valid passport, enabling travel abroad, to being able to vote, and nationals are also entitled to the protection of their state and to various benefits described under international law. I'm going to read a couple of highlight portions from these letters. Um, this one of the highlight parts is the court said in this case that nationality is a legal bond having as its basis a social fact of attachment and genuine connection of existence, interests, and sentiments together with the existence of reciprocal rights and duties. In this project, the researcher discussed the principle of nationality with the help of not bomb case and the impact of globalization on nationality and international law. Okay, here are some facts that are highlighted. Uh, this person's name is not bomb, was born in Hamburg and held German nationality by birth. In 1905, he went to Guatemala, took up residence there, and made that country the headquarters of his business activities. He had business connections in Germany, and sometimes went there on business. He also paid a few visits to his brother, who had lived in Liechtenstein since 1931. In 1939, Nachbaum applied for admission, had admission as a national of Liechtenstein. His request was granted and his passport was issued, the three years residence requirement being waived. Notbaum returned to Guatemala, and, did, and when Guatemala later declared war on Germany, he was interned, his property confiscated. In 1951, the government of Liechtenstein instituted proceedings before the International Court of Justice, in which he claimed restitution and compensation on the ground that the government of Guatemala had acted toward the person and property of Mr. Friedrich Nottenbaum, a citizen of Liechtenstein, in a manner contrary to international law. So the judgment it is for Liechtenstein, as it is for every sovereign state, to settle by its own legislation the rules re relating to the acquisition of its nationality and to confer that nationality by naturalization granted by its own organs in accordance with that legislation. It is not necessary to determine whether international law imposes any limitations on its freedom of decision in this domain. Furthermore, nationality has its most immediate, its most far-reaching, and for most people, its only effects within the legal system of the state conferring it. Nationality serves above all to determine that person upon whom it is conferred enjoys the right and is bound by the obligation which the law of the state in question grants to or imposes on its nationals. This is implied 
in the wider concept that nationality is within the domestic jurisdiction of the state. Uh, conclusion. In the above case, the International Court of Justice uh, introduced the concept of effective nationality requiring that for the granting of nationality to be recognized by other states the existence of a genuine link between an individual and the state granting naturalization is necessary. The ICJ, International Court of Justice, confirmed on the one hand that the matter of nationality is within the exclusive competence of a state, and on the other hand, that the other states uh, are entitled to challenge the grant of nationality unless there is a genuine connection between the individual concerned and the state concerned with nationality upon them. Yes. Um, in the context of the Nottenbaum case, it is important to emphasize that the court was particularly influenced by two factors. First, by a letter from the German Foreign Office of uh, 4th of July, 1939, stating that German interests may require that some of its citizens may acquire foreign nationality. And for that reason, their respect for denationalization as well as subsequent renaturalization should be facilitated and looked upon favorable. Second, Nottenbaum was an active member of the Nazi party and as such was on the British and the U.S. blacklist. So what was held is by 11 votes, three, the court held that Lichtenstein was not entitled to exercise diplomatic protection and present a claim to the court on behalf of Nottenbaum. The right of protection arises only when there is a genuine link between the claimant state and its national. And there is no genuine link between Nottenbaum and Lichtenstein. That was the first one. Islam, so you can see that even they're talking about nationalities and they're using people's information about their nationality to determine whether nationality is a key component in these cases. And this is actual real case law that these students wrote essays on that you can look up, the real case law information on these. Um, and that was just the, you know, and so they claim the person's a stateless person, which means they don't have any home. But he had a real case stating that Nationality was a key component because he was a national, he has certain inalienable rights. And as a national, you do, but if you're not a national and you let somebody strip you of those rights and you don't have any, you don't have anything. You have privileges which are granted and those can be what? Taken away. Dred Scott. Dred Scott is a good example, but Dred Scott, the funny thing about Dred Scott, even after his brother passed away, he took on his brother's name I know mean, y'all know that. Uh, we need to run his name. We have the book Dress Cop City too, but Circus and Publishing.com. But he took on his brother's name and still was a slave name. It's not like he took a name that didn't dilute slavery. And he fought for a long time. As a matter of fact, when the decision came down, you know, he had passed away long before the decision came down. But what's interesting is the judge Taney that was on that case. Because he said someone of African descent could never be a citizen, people actually thought that that was birthed like the Creator said it. That was a European person that they considered him a racist that said that. Opposed to Black Bill. Opposed to, say that again? Black Bill. Black Bill. Where Lincoln represented uh, Black Bill as a Moor. Yes. And he didn't fall under the Dred Scott. He came under the March laws and Constitution. Absolutely. But um, I also have some information on uh, some uh, comments that Abraham Lincoln made about the Moors. Did you, have you ever read that information? I've read those. Oh, okay. Well, we got that for you too, right? <laughs> it's all, we got so much information here to blow the top of your head off. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> and so we're going to, um, because I'm going to give this all some of this information, because I want to, we're going to skip out this because I'm going to take questions. We're going to go into some of this, but I want to go into the second letter, and I just want to go down to some important things that it said in the second uh, letter that was written. Nationality solves the problem of stateless by granting a person its national identity. This is achieved through birth registration. Secondly, excuse me, it eradicates the issue of gender 
discrimination that is normally highlighted in the nationality laws that normally bars women from passing their nationality to their children. Such laws are still enacted in countries such as Syria where women have such concerns. On the same note, the existence of nationality enables the eradication of discrimination that is based on religion and ethnicity, as well as ensuring legal identification through legal registration of births. Separately, nationality leads to nationwide development. Since every citizen is bounded by the same law, same new culture and government, thus they feel to be part of one nation with one objective. So these are essays on research that law students did on nationality. So again, nationality is the key, as you can see in, other, in all of this. Right now, you know, we have a problem going on where the children are being separated from their parents. What does that remind y'all? Who did that happen to? Slavery. Absolutely. What thing's different though? People are saying no. Right? When it happened to us, nobody was there to say no. Can you switch over to me for the next time? When it was um when it happened to us, it was no one there to say no. But now people are saying, no, we're not letting this happen again. You can't separate the child from the parent. But you know, Judge Session is a good old plantation master. Excuse me, that's what he was planning on doing. <coughs> um, another um, document. The one that um, they have, the new law they passed about nationality, or it was passed in 2000. I just wanted to give you all some information. Like I said, you all can probably look it up. Um, but it was a law passed, I think it was 2015, where they talked about how important nationality was for stateless children. Uh, and the key to this, I wish y'all could see, says, I am here, I belong. Urgent need for, ch for in childhood statelessness. Now, what's happening is, you know, this is what they're doing by separating the children from their parents. And so this is a document that I also have on the drive, waiting for it to load up on the drive, that is talking about how important nationality is. How many of you are, um, are really um, into the different declarations of rights, the International Business Freedom Act? the um, United States Religious um, Human Rights, the Rights of the Child. Okay. In your booklets, if you have it in the Who are the Boys booklet? We want to get some key components here. Um, you should highlight these. <coughs> you should highlight these. that the child shall be entitled from his birth to a name and a nationality. So if that's not important, from the time of the child's birth, they're entitled to a name and a nationality. Why do you think that would be so important to put into a declaration for children? A name and a nationality. Obviously, they weren't born with a name, correct? And a nationality. And so every child's entitled to one. Are you a child? Yes. Absolutely. So you're entitled to a name and nationality. I want to also go to principle seven. That's on page 20. It says the child is entitled to receive education which shall be free and compulsory at, at least the elementary stages. He or she shall be given an education which will promote his or her. Okay. 
general culture and innate him or her on the basis of equal opportunity to develop his or her abilities, his or her individual judgment, and his or her sense of moral and social responsibilities and to become a useful member of society. The best interest of the child shall be the guiding principle of those responsible for his or her education and guidance. Their responsibility lies in the first place with his or her parents. Should you sit the children being taken away from their parents? No. Who should be guiding the children? The parents. Is these public school systems educating your child in your best interest of the child? No. Absolutely not. Can someone from another organization tell me that I can't homeschool my child? No. What right protects me? What did I just read from? The rights of the child. Are you a national? Are you a national? Yes. Are you a national? I don't hear nothing. Yes. Does this law apply to you? Yes. But they're saying national here. Yes. So that means that you can educate your children how you see fit, and no one can tell you how to educate your child. Y'all might want to highlight these. Excuse me. Now I want to go to the Declaration of Human Rights. Let's go down to Article 15. That's on page 27. It says, number one, everyone has the right to a nationality. Number two, no one shall be arbitrarily, what does arbitrarily mean? Anybody know what that means? Okay, good. Arbitrarily deprived of his nationality, nor denied the right to change his nationality. So do you have the right to be a more? Yes. Under what declaration tells you you have the right? Not that we just know it, but now that it's on paper, what declaration tells you you have that right? Where did I just read from? Human rights. Human rights. Absolutely. I'm just showing you all these different places that you can go to and you can proclaim your status. And no one can tell you. We got even the resolutions in here to tell you about the Baker deal. I'm going to wrap this up with questions. Um, we're going to go to the rights of indigenous people. Are you indigenous? Yes. yes. What makes you indigenous? Who can tell me? Who said that? Owner of the land. Absolutely. The owners of the land. Are you Aboriginal? Yes. yes. All right. How can you be Aboriginal and Indigenous? Tell me how's that. Because that's the question people are asking. What makes you Aboriginal? First year. Thank you very much. So can you be Aboriginal, Indigenous, and be a Moor? Yes. Yes. Does any of those replace your nationality? No, it just identifies with who you are. It just strengthens your argument. That's what it does. Let's go to the Declaration of the I mean, the, uh, I'm in the in Rights of Indigenous People. Page 51. Page 51. Yes, it starts on page 51. Article 6. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Read it for me, Mom. Here you go. Here you go. Every indigenous individual. Rights of Indigenous People, page 51, Article 6. Every, indi every indigenous individual has the right to a nationality. Absolutely. Every indigenous person has a right to a nationality. Now, this is not me making this stuff up. You know, this is information that's actually put out there that you can use. Absolutely. All right, I also want to go to, yes, say that one more time. I just want to interject. Oh, sure, go right there. There will be a lot of people who say, well, this is a declaration, it's not a law. Keep in mind, what do they say? One of the greatest documents of all time is the Declaration of Independence. So it's the importance of what people put on it. So when you hear that argument, it's going back to the Declaration of Independence. So this can be just as powerful. It, it is as powerful as that. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And so we have the rights of indigenous people, we have the Declaration of Human Rights, we have the rights of a child. And then we also have International Human Rights Freedom Act of 1998 that backs up the Declaration of Human Rights. That everyone has a name and a nationality, and you're entitled to that name and nationality. Then you have, if you look in these books, you have resolutions. One of the great resolutions people talk about is Resolution 75, the Act of Congress, April 17, 1933, Petition for Proclamation. And so we, we gave the resolutions 1202, the Resolution 194, apologizing for the enslavement and racial segregation of the so called African Americans. So the people know that they did an injustice to us. And so who is it to correct the wrong? Who should correct the wrong? We should, absolutely. Should we wait for another man to try to correct his wrong? No. Because he would have to rewrite his story. Is he going to do that? No. Absolutely not. So we have to rewrite the story with the what? The truth. The truth. The truth. Not his story. Our story. Our information. Yes, Tom? And then also we have the doctrine of discovery in here, information too as well, and a picture. But we also have bringing to the end 500 years of injustice, okay, to us here. So there's so much information about us that we can't give it to you all in one session. But you keep coming back for the information. Keep purchasing literature, purchase the DVDs, watch the information on YouTube. But I have to say, be careful about some of the stuff you watch. Because some people are not trying to tell you the truth, they're just trying to sell you a bit of goods. And we, you know, me, I'm so tired of being lied to, and tired of people lying to me, and I think that you all are probably tired of being lied to. If we want to lie, you can go to this man for lies, right? So we don't want a bunch of lies. You just give me the truth the best of your understanding. And I can make an informed decision what kind of decision can y'all make? An informed, informed decision. Whether or not I want to go this way. Islam is a mouse. This time I'm going to open up the floor to questions. I know we spoke about this um, at the headquarters. Just wanted you to know, record because this topic come up quite a bit on Facebook. One would think that, due to the fact that they have proclaimed their free and national name, it automatically places them in a nation. Could you give clarification or knowledge on that as we spoke of at the headquarters? Yes, absolutely. The problem with that is if, or well, I would ask the people, when you proclaim your free national status, on whom you proclaimed it with, where is your headquarters? Where is the people that when you need some assistance with something, can you go to? Because it puts you into, nationality is free, you have to push you into a nation, but then where is your accountability? Every nation has a headquarters. They have an office, they have someone that they can go to about have problems, affairs. Where can you go once you proclaim your status if you don't do it in the proper form? So it is a lot of people out there giving out nationality cards that are not right. And I don't care what they say, they're not. If they were not issued under the Articles of Incorporation of 1926 by Prophet Noble Valley, it's not a nationality card. If it does not say, does your nationality identification card for the Moist Science for America and birthright? For the Moorish American ETC, we are the all true and divine prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. May the blessings of the God of our Father, Allah, be upon you to carry this card. Not no card to tell you Aboriginals and indigenous to the land because we know that. I don't need a card to tell me that. What I need a card to state is that this is my proclamation of my free national name, and this is through whom I have the Holy Quran of Mecca, my authority derives from. Not some cards somebody decides to make up. So if you get these cards, these people can you call them? Because I have people bring them up all the time. And I say, well, I can have you on record. Uh, where did you get your card from? 
What's your car say? And they can take you to different places. And I'd be like, well, why'd you call them? Because they have no one to help them there. See, in the literature of the prophet, no y'all even talk about this in the Moorish literature, he tells you that you are tied to all the benefits of your nation when you pay your dues and keep in mind with all the sessions. So most people don't want to belong to a nation because they don't want to pay dues. Our people are something else. They don't want to pay dues. They don't want to pay for anything. Anything you are a member of, that's a gym club or anything. You got to pay dues. So how is the nation supposed to run if it's not financially done by the people? So we established a headquarters back in 2012, officially took off in 2013, when we put the notice out there declaring and reproclamating the Moorish Nation so that everybody that comes through the divine the national movement through the Moorish Nation have their divine rights reestablished to them through the holy divine prophet, no withdrawal like he wanted us to do. So that's what establishes you as a nation. You have the protection of the nation once you proclaim the correct way. I think Dr. Nayella wants the mic. Islam, um, Prime Minister, um, in, in line with that, there are many, as you say, out there who have actually proclaimed their nationality and done their paperwork through other means. Um, and I know they're probably, some are probably even on, the, on this uh, lecture watching. So what, can a person do, or what should a person do who, hearing this information, that's perhaps maybe wherever they they were uh, nationalized and, and received their paperwork and nationality card or identification card through, now that might not be exactly what they need to be, for lack of a better term, legitimate. What should a person do um, with this armed with this information? What they should do is get in touch with yourself, me, or Chief Daoud Latibe, or the Tamar, and go to circle7publishing.com or info at more science uh, with rescuesarebay.com and download the proper paperwork. It's a declaration of lawful name correction or change. They should do that and download the nationality card application. Um, they should correct the wrong immediately because we're, we don't accept paper from other places because it's not in proper order. So we need you to fill out the paperwork properly so you can get the right identification properly. Because it is your national, your card serves several purposes. Your nationality, identification, and birthright. It serves three purposes. The process is your nationality, identification, and birthright. That card is a powerful card. It's the most powerful card here on the planet. And we're the only nation of people that have a card that identify all three of those things because our birthright is taken away. So the only thing I can tell you is correct the wrong immediately. And by the way, I have you and, Ta and Sister Tamara's nationality cards with me. I'm free. <laughs> I'm free now. I'm free. No, right there in the, uh, Michelle. Well, yes. So um, that's what I would say for people you know, I know a lot of people gonna say a lot of things that get angry and upset, but the truth is the truth, and it's no apology for the truth. Islam, Chief, did you want to speak on it? Islam, this is his favorite topic. <laughs> is that a mic? Oh. Yeah, hey, question. You know, oh, I oh, oh, Chief, Chief, that's Islam, um, you know, I kind of hesitate coming on Facebook Live because a lot of people who are going to dispute this, um, talk bad about people. One thing I'm here for is the uplift and the all people. We're not saying there's one right way. I don't know what other people are doing, but in my research, this was done correctly, lawfully. That's why I'm here. Um, that's my research, you know, and I urge other people instead of just trying to find fault. You know, like the prophet says, if we all united, this would be all. You know, but we got too many people pointing fingers or pointing out what's wrong, what's not right, and that's part of the problem. Um, again, I urge you to study 
and prove that the method and the procedures that she went through to reproclimate or reestablish this Moorish nation for the government and how it was done originally by the Prophet of Glory under a certain statute instead of going through any corporations. I mean, there's a big difference. A lot of people are privy to that. You know, we need to share that information. So I, I suggest before you point a finger and say so-and-so is wrong or we're not doing it the right way, just study. And then, like the Prime Minister said, we can make an informed decision. Yes, I'm Shukran for that shit. I'm, yeah, he's more humble than me. I'm gonna tell you that if it's not the way the prophet put it out there, it's wrong. Period. By line. I, I don't care what people say on Facebook. I'm on Facebook Live. I don't really care about that. The first time somebody told me I was on uh, YouTube, I had a fit for a minute. He said, well, you want me to tell him to take you down? I was like, no, that's all right. But, you know, I'm not, don't want to be on here because I'm afraid of what I'm saying. And I don't care what people say, you know what I mean? Because the truth stands. It don't need no witness, just support. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. If you don't like it, change your card and do it the way the prophet did on the Article of Incorporation 1926. If it's not done that way, it's wrong. And that's the bottom line. I'm not the only one doing nationality cards, but I am doing it the right way. If it's not that way, it's not nationality card. Anybody can make an identification card. A nationality card is the key. And I hold the key. It says the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asians of North America. Because it's in my hands, I'm going to do it the right way. So when you turn the lock, the door will open. That's right. All right? That's wow. That's That's right. Also, um, if anyone wants to do their nationality uh, paperwork today, we can assist you with that. Dr. Mayo will be able to uh, notarize it for you, and we do have paperwork to download for you. You can download it, and we can do your paperwork for you today, year two, if you'd like to do that. We just want to give people the opportunity to um, do that if they want to, or you can just, you know, whenever you're ready, you know. But I say welcome home, boys. You know, welcome home. When you're ready to do it, then you do it. Welcome home. Yes, sister. Um, question. I have a an, an 18 year old and a four year old. So when I correct my status and claim my nationality and birthright, does that go for my children because they come from me or does my 18 year old have to do her paperwork and do I have to do paperwork for my four year old? What we do for children under uh, 16 years of old age is we do a baptism certificate for your children. Okay, that, that's the note because they were born on 14 years of slavery. We probably have a birth certificate, correct? And so this baptism certificate helps relieve them from that. Anyone that's 16 years or older will have to proclaim their status for themselves. So your 18 year old would need to proclamate her status as well. But yes, as mother maternal, when you become free, your children become free. But you also need records to help you with that as well. And so the uh, baptism uh, was put into place. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Timothy Dingle Hill, but he put the uh, registration and birth and certificate in, in Washington, D.C. registry in place for the Moors. And so we go by that baptism certificate degree to help you with your children as well. You can use it for schools or anything like that with your children. All right, and then anything over 16 years of age, they need to proclaim. I mean, they think they grown anyway you know, after that age, but you got to remind them the problem. Nobody already says three times seven, all right? So they're not going to the three times seven. So, but we, we nationalize people and their children. We have like people with lots of different children, different nationalities, and children have real different spirits too. Yeah, one little brother says, well, they fall days, but I'm an ill. He's seven years old. And I said, well, make sure you're ill, little low. And he said, because I make the law. I said, all right, there you go. So his mother said, go ahead and give him that ill. So children feel their spirit, you know, too. So what we help you do with your nationality, because years ago, being had a, we used to choose names by the last records of whoever the slave master was that had your family. But now in this electrified age with a more ingenuous people, more wiser, we talk to you and find out from you what spirit do you feel like you carry? Are you a bay? Are you a warrior? If we're in a battle on the battlefield, will you be the first line or the first on the front of the line to fight? Or you be back there writing the laws, you know? And so that's how we help you choose 
your bagel deal. You know what I'm saying? Ali is usually a, a sort of a something who's world famous or family, or you know, if you come from a world ranking or something that's given to you by an, an addict or an elder or someone to that effect. It's not one that's bestowed upon you on your own. But the Bay Ali Hill are three tribal names. I hear people say that we have five, we only have three. Bay Ali Hill. Day is not a tribal name, and it will not establish with the family of nations. Al is the same thing as Eo, only in the Arabic language, but it doesn't establish with anything either. So people are throwing out all kinds of things out there without explanation. The prophet said, I am the question and the answer. And since I follow his footsteps, I am the question and the answer too. It's not. Oh, yes, using the ill and bay. All right, some people just want to have it all, I guess, you know. The only people who should be having ill, bay, or bay, ill is women who have been obligated. Say that you were, you took your free national status and you married a, you were bay and a brother was an ill. You want to still carry your family bay, you would go bay, ill, if that be the case. But then the problem is constructed, then when you have children, you have to determine whether they're going to be bay or ill. You can't carry them both. Most sisters don't carry them both, and most brothers don't either. But it's sort of like our, our Latin brothers and sisters. You know they usually carry their mother and father's name a lot of the time. But we don't carry both. You either are bay or ill, or ill or bay. You're not both. And then some people just want to have that both. I'm, I'm not sure why. Some people do thing. Bay, ill, ill, bay. You don't need both of those names. You either are one or the other. If you identify yourself right, you wouldn't need both of them anyway. Are you a warrior? Are you a lawman? Which one are you? You know what I'm saying? Which one do you feel? I know I'm a babe. My family are babe, but I know I'm a warrior by the heart. There's no doubt about it. So if I would have had a different name, I would have corrected it anyway. Because I'm definitely a warrior. I want a front line battle on every day. And most of my family were babes are warriors too. But one of my family members changed her name to Hill because she said she felt like she's more of a lawmaker. She was born a babe. But she changed to ill. So that's fine because you have the right to change your nationality because you have the right to it. But you don't need to carry two. It's either one or the other. That's it. Go ahead. Um, I have heard somebody say that because prime minister is an English term, and because I, I wanted to, or I am going to use your homeschool program for my son who is homeschooled. Um, I wasn't sure what they were getting at with that because teacher is also an English term. Um, what is the fact that you use the term prime minister? I know people probably have that same question. Um, what does that have to, does that go against Moorish science, I guess, I'm asking. No, because Muslim, M-O-S-L-M-E is also English, right. okay? Um, but Prime Minister Amir, we can say use a mirror or anything else, a mirror for a woman. But just in modern day time, just to be more distinct, because if you even look at all Islamic countries, have a Prime Minister. But if you look at the definition of Prime Minister in either the Arabic or Hebraic language, it's a mirror or Sharif or Sharifa. So, I mean, you call me that. It don't make me no difference. You know what I'm saying? Don't call me too late to eat and I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But it's fine. But you know, a lot of things we use are English. I mean, there's people, you know, people want to disrespect who you are. And so I earned this this uh, degree here. People, I was asked to take on this role to make it clear for everybody. I didn't want this role. But people, you laugh, but people thought because of my lineage and my work that I've done, they asked me to take on this position. And it's an appointed position, not an election. So if the people, if all you all decide to walk away today tomorrow, that don't mean I can't, because I'm the one looking for it, and I need to carry this shit moving. And so that's what a prime minister does. It's just like a president is an English term. The president is just the same thing. If any nation, Islamic nation, needs a prime minister, or Asiatic nation, we have prime ministers or presidents. So that's basically what it, what it is and means. You know, and people just sit down probably with anything that they don't want to use or call you. Or, you know, that, that's it, especially you want to disrespect. That's it. Shikas and grand shikas and all that, those are all English terms too. Amir, Amira, you know what I'm saying? Hit day, if you're more, I mean, it's different languages, so that's all it is. Islam. Islam, listen. Islam. Um, Islam, brother. 
Yeah, I just, um, you were talking about the L and Bays. Uh, I do believe I've seen something online that was saying there was no longer, uh, well, you could no longer use L, like uh, when you're trying to proclaim your name, I believe I've seen something on that, like, yeah, no more L or something like that. Do I, believe, I, believe, I mean, I'm not mad that you, but I'm just mad that whoever was foolish enough to post that on Facebook, you're always going to have ill days as long as we live, and that's there's no more of us. Yeah. So how can you not no longer use your? Would everybody be a bay? Yeah. Everybody can be a bay. Okay. Because right. right, I, I I make laws and enforce laws, yeah. but if you take my more superior domination, I'm a bay. I will put down the Kraken to get on the battlefield yeah. and go hoot you. Now, you know I'm what I'm saying? So, way, so right, so way. either way, um, you know, you have to feel, see that's why I say people, because we're back in the older days, we used to have to sit down to the chamber and figure out the name and all that. Now, people are more intuitive with who they are. So if you know your spirit, you can name you. Yeah. Just like when people come to counsel me and ask me, can you help me with the name? Sure, tell me about yourself, that's what I do. Get the information, then go back and I give them three names to choose from, you know, when they want to correct their status and get that Christian name off them. And I help them like that. I tell them, I give them three names, choose from those three names, but I talk to you first. Because, I, you know, it's like taking a child. I don't know if you have children yet. When you have a child, you think about, what am I going to name my child? Because that's when I want my child to grow up and take on that name. The same thing when we name you, my child, our mother. So I have to make sure that you get the correct name. When we named my son Shamsuddin, who I was so excited with that name, Shamsuddin Kai Kati. My son is a Shamsuddin, he's gonna get traveling super. He's gonna be a luxury like his father. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna, I was so excited, I couldn't wait. I knew I was having a boy. I didn't even wanna think about a girl's name. That's how mothers get excited about their sons. And children, you love my daughters too. But we love our sons. Y'all kind of disappoint us sometimes, but <laughs> we love you anyway, and so we're here to help you get on the right track, like run the right track. So we got to make sure that you pick a proper name, not some of these crazy names. People get this long name, or they take and try to create a name and make up something, and then you ask them what it means, they have no idea. You have to know what your name means, you have to mean something to you. It's a personal relationship between you and your name. No, nah, indeed. It's not. Um, Islam, Prime Minister, I wanted to get, I want you to talk again a little bit more about the reproclamation. Um, I thought that was some great information that you shared and for it to just get out there so others can understand and know what that means as well. Yes, after 100 years, as the law passed, just learned that we teach law, um, is that after 100 years, the rights to an organization or any company is no longer valid. When the Prophet Don Gali came and proclamated in 1913, 100 years had passed. I think Taj spoke about this for the first right. And so we had to reproclamate the nation to reestablish us so we are doing things correctly under the nation, establish us as a nation of people with the paperwork on file, where the Prophet filed the original paperwork. We got a new number, but if you type that number in, it takes you right back to the original number because we're in a new era of time. So now everyone is nationalized and nationalized under the nation under that proclamation. And I smile because it made me feel good to know that I was able to do that work. And so that's basically it. And anyone can have every abortion record should have a copy of the notice. Every single one. And so we offered it as those cost anything to have a copy of the notice. Now the sheep found out one thing about the notice when he looked at the one that they put through Chicago, Illinois, with the stamp that it was missing a couple words. I think it was something that was cut off. But we can also give you a copy of the one where you can see the bottom part because when they shrink it, it no longer they take 11 by 14, which is lawful paper. They now shrink it into 8 by 8 by 10. 8 by 10. And thank you. And so it cut off some of the wording. But you can go to Chicago. You can pull it up. You can ask for copies of it or whatever and get a copy from there. And we can also give you a copy. Ours has little marks all over it, but things we want you to look at and identify with. But in the proclamation, it tells you about us, what the prophet did, it talks about the conflict court, it talks about what the Europeans owe us, it talks about our rights to travel, our right nationality and birthright. I mean, I try to cover everything I could put into a notice, in a notice. And so this is letting them reestablish the notice into all the governors, 
the Jordan Islands, uh, we sent to the Hague Convention, and we sent to our foreign brothers and sisters over, we sent it everywhere. And what we've been doing in the um, law class in the chamber is looking to read through the document again, and we send it out again, not as a reprogrammation per se, but as a reminder that we are still here, and we are still awake. And so, Chief, did you want to add something? I saw your eyebrows go up. Islam, um, she mentioned the law class. Um, I think every Moorish man should know the law. I mean, you're supposed to, you're a scientist. And I've been through the law class, I'm still sitting in on refreshing, but you do learn the law instead of the legal process. So you will know how to sort of, they say, stand on the square. It's very informative, and I, I, like I said, I recommend everybody. Um, oh, I thought you were going to talk about the notice. Like, oh, yes, the notice also. Um, it's 37 pages, and it's supposed to be not just read, but studied. It'll answer a lot of questions that you already have in that document. Everything in that document has been done, and it's lawful. You can look it up can't dispute it. So again, you know, 30 some pages, read it, reread it, study it. Uh, you'll pick up something different every time you, you go over it. So again, it don't answer a lot of your questions. So if anybody needs a copy, uh, I can email it to you. Just get in contact with We have it too. Dr. Nye, too. It's on. The, uh, the notice that you sent out, The law class, is that online? Yes, sir. It's an international class, it's online. Do you access it as you like, or do they have certain nights? Oh, no, we have, uh, we do it every Saturday. It's a one Saturday a week, and it's, it runs for six months. We have 701, 702, and 703. And what, what, what time, what time uh, on Saturday? Uh, we start at 2 o'clock from 2 to 5 p.m. Sometimes we go over <laughs> from 2 to 5. Thank you. You're welcome. The first one I think everyone should take of uh, 701 is called Defining Law. And we, we don't start without at least 10 people sign up. We have about three people on that. But please, Prime Minister, will you please start the class? And some people said that they need it because they're interested in doing the consular court. And so they want to be familiar with the law before they join the conflict court information. Uh, can you also print the class out from? Uh, what I do is send a recording and slides of every class. So yes, you can hear. You can go back and hear the class if you miss something or need a refresher. And also the documentation that we get in each class, you get a slide copy of everything we do. Excellent. We don't have nothing to hide. You got some questions, sis? Yeah. Islam, Prime Minister, can you elaborate on the right to travel um, process, the class, and the, the tags? Sometimes people are, you know, people make up their tags and then they get stopped and, you know, they, they are, you know, have to deal with the policy officers and so forth. But um, could you? elaborate on your right to travel classes and what one can get. I think you mentioned a little bit about it, but a little bit more information with regard to that. Sure. What we do to right to travel is a separate law class and what we do is teach you and, and we do it and, and we try to do it in one or two days, but it may take long. But what we do with the right to travel is we go over ex exactly how you invoke your right to travel in a class with law information, information on the law. So the right to travel class just by itself comes with a pamphlet. That if you like to get the pamphlet, it comes with a pamphlet. And we also give you information on how to right to travel. And that class is only $150 for the class. If you decide that you want the right to travel and the tags, and it comes with the right to travel identification card, then that's $300 for the whole entire class. You get your tags, which is a front and back tag, you don't ever have to worry about trying to register them again like you do with the Division of Motor Vehicles, whatever. They're certified through the nations. What we do as a nation is we put your car underneath the nation under certification 
so it becomes our property. When I say that, it doesn't become our property physically like we take your car from you, but if they try to confiscate your property or take it, it comes under the nation. So the nation battles that battle with you as far as your right to travel. But that's what we do, but we help you make sure we don't give out any tags if you do not take the right to travel class because we don't want to be, if you get stopped, you need to know how to identify with the right to travel and what your rights are to do. So the class really helps. And I'm not saying you get all the information in one class, but it gives you information and materials. We do mock courting when we do it. So you can, we do like playing the judge, someone playing the dead person that got stopped the national with the right to travel. And we don't get the right to travel tag if you're not a national either because you don't get those benefits of right without profiting. We want to make sure that we're protecting you too under the right to travel. But yes, the nation does have tags that we do issue out. But you have to be ready to do the right to travel. That consists of canceling that contract. We have information to help you cancel the contract with them. That means any excessive fines or anything that you may have under this government, I don't care how much you don't like them, they de facto need to pay those de facto fees so that we can make sure they don't have any cause to try and stop you once you invoke your right to travel. That's real important. People say, oh, I don't want to pay the speed ticket or whatever. Yes, we know it's not a crime to speed, However, under that driving instrument, you're into a contract with them saying that you will follow those rules of the road. So you need to cancel the contract so you can cancel those things, get rid of that, start over again. So then if you are pulled over for traveling while you're speeding or because you don't have their governmental tags or whatever, then we can battle that battle because you're no longer under contract. But you have the kids, you have to cancel the contract. Does that make sense? You have to cancel that contract. And I can't say that enough. And you have forms to Say that one more time. You have the forms to do that. Yes, I do. We have the forms. Yes. And under the classes for uh, law master, yes. uh, do you have to, a uh, certain time you sign up for each class? I mean. Right. Every six months we do a different class. Like we just got finished law master 702. So when will the new class start? Uh, we, when we get 10 students, we start the next class. Okay, and? When we'll we go 701. 701, defining law. You'll do 701. I know you want 703, but we got to do 701. He's ready to do 703. I just want to interject something. Someone asked about the voter registration card. Okay, let me just um, say something right quick. You know, a lot of people, us Moors are out there saying that, you know, mutants, or you know, people saying study, 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 study on your own. Why is it that we're the only people who think that way? Everybody else, every other culture has a nation. We're supposed to have a nation. So the prime minister told me, makes sense. We do everything lawful here. Now, whoever she nationalizes, the nation is responsible for that person. So you're not out there alone. You practicing the right to travel, you get an issue, the nation is with you to support you. It makes sense to me. That's why I'm here. You know, we're supposed to uplift the people, and that's what we're trying to do. Voters registration card. When I read the, um, I heard you, you know, right? When I read um, from you, from the prophet said that we have the right to vote, right? So we're in this, this uh, de facto government with the right to vote. So if the voter's registration card is a way that you're on those ballots so you can invoke your right, the key is having your free national name on that registration. That doesn't put you into that facto government because that's a right to vote. It doesn't say a voting privilege. It says a voting right. There's a difference. And so that's where sign up for those voter registration cards, get your right to vote. All those bays and ills, do you think they're really going to see that in their voters' registration? Because it tells us that we will be able to vote unmolested by other citizens. We have the right to do so. And so, if people don't want to vote or whatever, that's fine. You know, I'm not here to again sell you anything. I'm only here to inform. So that is what you can do with the voters' registration card. It works to the vote. And your free, free national appellation. 
Father. That be a matter of changing one's uh, appellation in their system or just creating all together a new registration utilizing one's free national name? You can, I'll, if you want to change it in that system, you can do that. And what I don't like about changing things in their system is all you're always going to be AKA, also known as something else. But if you start over, the process said you all get new business in your new name. So why not start over? Because you're not that dead person anymore. See, you're awake now. Look at that chronic word on your head. That means you're awake. So you don't need to do anything underneath that de facto name, that Christian name, that slave name. Because that's what it is. So start over. Start new. Feel good about you. When we get our government like we need to, we won't need another man's registration process. We can create our own because that's what a nation does. There's a question here. It says, um, why would we vote for de facto government officials? Shouldn't we be voting our own wars into their rightful positions? Yes, do so you know any that qualify? That's right, we need to be quite, we need to be running in our bays and L's. Right, so I'm asking the question, I've got, got questions too. Do you know any that qualify? Because we should be putting them up to run for office. That's right. That's how we, we had a brother in Baltimore ill running right now, but he got that ill hyphenated onto that channel property name. Mm -hmm. I she can't name. She can't name? California. Let's California see. That's right. We, so that's how we take our place amongst the affairs of men. Absolutely. By getting involved in, in our free national names in government, if you will, to govern our people. I'm a, I'm a camelback off our defense minister, Sheikh Kareem Mohammed Bey. I love that mo. He's like 77 years old. He said, Prime Minister, can you imagine all of us in every territory with more tags? Can they knock all of us up at one time? <laughs> so imagine, we just took all of us in one community and just everybody started riding out with more tags. They would go crazy. And he's 77, that's a dream of his, so I'm trying to make that take place. We never know when we're gonna leave this flesh, you know. This cord is buying this boat, we don't know. So I'd like to see that for him too, because that's what he really would like to see. But some of us are afraid, I understand this man got power and you scared. Just say you scared, I ain't mad at you. You know what I mean? Say you scared because we've been programmed that way. I'm not mad at you for that, so say you scared, but how can I be less afraid of him? And what can I do to stand on my own? See, because I don't sort of stand on a straight, just stand on the square, whatever. I stand on 45 degree angle, stand upright, stand like a board, and proclaim what I'm supposed to do. And that's just what we have to do. And I know that it's a friend, you know, it makes you afraid because this is a new territory. So we become fearful in a new territory. But that's all right. Sometimes you gotta take your time. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. This won't be too slow when you get left behind. You know what Erica says that you know you want to get left, you know, the mothership movement, you get left behind. So you want to kind of just try to move at a better pace still, but the prophet said he wants active more than not passive more. It's not to see why he says that because people who are passive are always undecisive. But people who are active are going to take a stand and take some action, and that's what we need in our movement. It's love. So. Is, um, um, yeah, I just want to know, are you doing the IDs as well? Uh, the, that, well, we do nationality cards. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they, they compile yeah. everything. Okay. Just, we have to get your picture and stuff. You have to do a, a two by two photo picture. Um, Nyella takes good pictures. Um, and we do that, um, you know, we prefer to be a white background and you have to have a fez or turban on your head. Yeah, we don't do. Right, we don't do, uh, we don't give out no Negro cards. You need to have a nationality card which your turban and fed should match your national flag. See, anybody can give out an ID card, you know, it makes sense, but you represent the nation, so you should act like what you represent. Yes, sir. Oh, no annex in the name. I think we went over that if we have to clarify it again. Annex and hyphenate it. 
bringing that dead weight with you? No, we don't do that either. That man is dead. Kill him. Loose that man and let him go. Got to do that. Asking me to type in the start of the first defining law class. I don't know what you were saying. You were waiting for at, at least seven more. Right, seven more people so we can, uh, right, they would like to know when the law class is going to start. Yes. The sooner you sign up, and we get 10 people, the sooner the class can start. Okay, all right. We can go online and sign up. Please. Absolutely, go right online to. Go to more science with GSKS, the Ray of Bay, D U R R I Y Y A H Bay, B E Y, not B A Y, dot com. Yes, I have a question. Um, I've been in contact with many of the sisters in the community, um, and a lot of them have been separated from their children. And I feel like my purpose in life is to advocate for them. But I wanted to know, do you offer classes that assist with, um, I don't know if it's social work, I mean social service law, is that what we would be dealing with with rescuing the children from being kidnapped and things of that nature? Yes, we have a circle called the Doors of Drew Ali, and so we get together and we issue, uh, concern the issues like that. Dr. Nayela and myself and Sister Tam are looking to reform the group and so um, with that, we can start doing things in our community with that too. Uh, the Doors of Duality was started in 2012 and we've been trying to incorporate since 2013 different systems with different things. So we would love to get together because that's a lawful issue. You know, we do cover that in our law classes too, but humanitarian issues is one of the big things that we look at in the sister circle. And so we would love to be able to do that and help out in the community. Because as we read in the rights of the child, it is unlawful to separate your child from the parent. But if you don't have a nationality or a birthright, they can do that to Negroes. Because you don't have any rights, you have privileges. Yes. Uh, I've been a foster parent, and um, you know, now getting the information about nationalizing and things of that nature, I'm um, trying to figure out can I protect the children that I have in my home? After your children, absolutely. Well, you get a baptism certificate for each one of them. Under and the law, right now you are the guardian or the parent for those children, correct? Yes. All right. And so you are able to do that by law, and you're protected. Thank you. That's the good thing about knowing the law. Feel good, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Oh, you know, sister, I'm waiting for you to ask the question on. I'm going to come right to you. <laughs> With this beautiful go-ahead piece on. We're going to show her how to wrap the turban before we leave here tonight. I was just asking, do we have to be uh, active more in order to take those classes? No, to take the law class, but you can't get a law master certificate unless you are. You can tell anybody can sign up for the law class because we're trying to teach the law to everyone. But see, by the time you finish the class, you be nationalized. <laughs> because it's the law, right? Nationality and law go hand in hand. Every Asiatic of America should know the law. Ignorance of the law is what? No excuse. Absolutely not. Right. And they tell you that all the time. So why do you think they tell you that? You don't know the Lord, like, I ain't know I did something wrong. That ain't my problem. Right? It's not their problem. The prophet said the Negro problem is our problem and is being solved only as it can. And that's through the more divine and national movement. We got to solve our own issues, Lord. We have time for one more question, and we're going to close out with prayer. Go ahead, Dr. Nelly, you have another question? Uh, I'm on a plane to California tomorrow. If you, here's a question. Let me read this. A couple of. 
the more, I guess the more have to take this class and have to get tags in order to place their automobile under the protection of the nation that is under trust of the nation, of the nation profit brought. I'm, I'm trying to read it as it, I think that's what they're saying. They want to know if it's underneath the trust. Right. Is that what they're asking? I think so. Okay. And yeah. yeah, go ahead, I'll read the next one. Then we do the last one after you respond to that one if you want to. Okay. Well, what we do is we put the nation underneath the nation, the reproclamation puts it in the trust of the prophet. So we just reproclamate all the information the prophet did. Again, this all falls under articles of incorporation. So when they put their their uh, conveyances into with the nation, we are the ones that are protecting that property. And so if anything happens to us, someone tries to take it, say, for instance, they're confiscated, the nation comes after them, not an individual. There's power in a nation. Individuals is not, there's power in the nation. The nation would say, hey, you have my property to release it under international law. Um, this is not a question on, online, but just to add to that, does that also apply to one's um, dwelling place, one's uh, physical property where they, you know, they dwell? If, does the nation protect, let's say, in cases of a foreclosure of a property? Well, now, that's a little tricky thing because a lot of people want to do foreclosure, I mean, not foreclosure, but they want to do, take their, uh, their mortgages and we teach you how if you want to take your mortgage and you want to discharge the debt. We don't, personally, as a nation, we can take on that case for you. The law masters can uh, take on a case and help you discharge the debt, but we don't take the responsibility of that dwelling where the discharge is. But if you have property or anything that you already out, own outright, then you can put it up underneath the nations for protection. But we do, once you discharge the debt, and you want to put up on the nation, then we can do that. But you got to get taught, discharge that debt because we don't want to have that on the nation uh, problem. So once we help you discharge the debt, then you can go ahead and put it underneath the nation once you own it outright. This is a, a call I got today, so I just want to put this out there. Um, a sister was concerned about a property that was recently foreclosed that her son is still living in, and they got the notice that it was it was it had been sold at share sale um, like a week or two ago. And her question, uh, based on some things she heard, you know, in some of the classes here, was whether or not there was a way to reclaim that property once it had actually been for, um, sold at foreclosure, given their Moorish having claimed their nationality, albeit not through the nation, but uh, was there a way in order to reclaim the property. We, we've been hearing about reversioners and different things like that. But yes, less, it's less pending has to be filed. And so the documentation would have to start expediently being filed because it was unlawfully foreclosed on her. She's a national proclaiming. A lot of people say they're nationals, but they're not living their life. They're not proclaiming, they're not doing the right things. That's probably how it got foreclosed. I'm not sure, I'm not judging, but I'm saying you have to do things in proper protocol. Some people just stop paying the mortgage without doing uh, the things necessary to transition into that. They just don't pay the way to get behind. And then instead of why they're still paying the mortgage, put the paperwork in saying, I no longer desire to contract with you. So it's a different way that you need to do that. We're waiting six or seven months behind, a year behind, and then try to proclaim it. Because then you look like you're trying to abandon the property, which then is saying that you're abandoning. So you don't want to do it. You're always a renter on the property. You never want to own it. If people look at their mortgages, um, it tells you that you are a renter. A tenant. Yeah. Tenant, right. And so if you're a tenant on the property, that means why are you paying for something that you don't own it, obviously. So there's so many different avenues that we can go to put it back off into the people who are wanting it. There's so many different ways we can do a mortgage. So what we usually do is take the, the way the person is, what's going on, we use the best source resource to help them get through the transition through that so that they can go ahead and wind up destroying that debt and you don't have to lose their property. Even if it's already gone to foreclosure? Well, um, that we have to do immediate action to try to work on that now that it's already foreclosed on to see what we can do to help out. Yes, we would have to do that. Okay. And last question. If, if you only need the defining law class to finish, 
can you pay and take the test to finish up? And if you own, well, defining law is not just defining law. There's so many avenues to defining law. You know what I mean? It's a six month process to define the law. So we have six different models. That's what each one is. So if they already have taken the law class and they take the test, yes, they can go ahead and take the test to get their law master certificate if they take the class previous. Yes. Okay, I think that's it. All right. Well, I should run off for everyone happy that we thank you in the Arabic language uh, for having us come out. We're going to go ahead and close with prayer. Um, if you all stand with me and rise and face the east, we can see in a 45 degree angle. We'll have our Secretary of State close us out with prayer. And I'll be the ancient part. Islam. So I'll stand and face the east, see that 45 degree angle. Five fingers on your left hand, two fingers on your right, repeat after me. Allah, the Father of the universe. Allah, the Father of the universe. The Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. Through his holy prophet, through all of Through his holy prophet, through all of Amen. 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 So, ancient voice prayer. Father God, Allah, I ask thee to bind our hearts and minds together as thy did in ancient times. This I ask of Allah. Amen. 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 Um, just by way of announcements, first of all, I want to thank you, Prime Minister. I want to thank you for, wasn't this an amazing class? A lot of information. And Secretary of State, you traveled all the way from the land of flowers to be here. Um, just to let you know, um, next week, let me see what's happening next week. Grand Chic, National Grand Chic, Taj Tariq Bay, will be here with us next week, which is the first Friday of the month. But on the 14th, which is a Saturday, we are also having a special class with Brother Kamita Yube. Um, we're not doing the workshop that we talked about that's being moved to the fall. So the workshop is actually going to be in the fall, but we will have a um, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. class because we're basically doing it because a couple brothers in Texas bought non-refundable tickets when they heard about the 14th for the original class. So we asked brother commit to you if he would do a class anyway, this lecture instead of a workshop. So, you know, those of you who want to get with him, he will be here on Saturday the 14th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, uh, we also, on the second um, Friday, I'm going to skip over, I'm going to meet you. We have brother Abdullah uh, Bay will be here, um, and he will also, on the 21st of July be doing a an entomology workshop. We have some information out there on House of Real Wicked Minds that you can sign. This is one you would have to register for. It's an online, we're doing an online fee as well as um, in person. I believe it's $35 um, in person for that um, entomology class and 20, uh, 45 notes and 25 notes um, if you take the class online. That is the 21st of July. So um, again, then on the third um, Friday, Grand Sheik, National Grand Sheik, I forget you saying that. National Grand Sheik, Taj Sharif Bay will be back here at the House of Real Waking Minds. So as always, we thank you um, for your attendance and we thank you for your participation. We love our um, Facebook Live family, we really do. And you know, I don't like to come on camera because I'm not skinny no more, no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we love you, um, appreciate you, I appreciate um, all the work that um, Sister Tamara L is doing, because I'm not the one behind the camera anymore. We have a new new camera. We're trying this Mevo. This is our first time with this Mevo camera, so it kind of follows you around the room and does different shots that we weren't able to do with the cell phone. But this is our absolute first time using it, and if you go back and look at the um, class, instead of that one shot um, thing that we were able to do 
um, with the phones, we now can zoom in, zoom out, different places. We'll be able to, when we get used to, when she gets used to, excuse me, she'll be able to be um, a production wizard. So we thank, we're thankful for all of uh, what she's doing. Also, um, if you didn't, there are books and um, videotapes, DVDs, rather videos, huh? DVDs that the um, Prime Minister has brought with her. And as she said, um, we will probably have some of the books here. Uh, so when she's not here, we will have some of the literature here that you can purchase. And uh, we certainly will do all we can to give you as much information as freely as we can that we have. For instance, I did put the um, House of Real Wicked Minds, a Gmail email out there if you want to request a copy of the Reproclamation documents, about 35 or 36 pages. I will email it to you if you request it via email. Again, thank you again for coming and safe travels back to your destinations. Islam. Islam. Um, I just wanted to say in closing, too, if you want to get the information on the, the nation and the email, I believe there are still some brochures over there for the information to get us to the email uh, for the law classes and for nationality information. All right, I want to thank you all and those who decide to be informed and wake up, welcome home. Bye.